problem. Buy Powerade. Powerade is the next thing. Buy Health Partners of Alabama and buy Bromberg's. Fine jewelers since 1831. Samford University Athletics and Alabama. We've been to Cyber Stadium. Scott Griffin along with Colin Hutto, former Bulldog here on the Alabama Cable Network. Samford taking on Tennessee Martin this week. And quickly, let's talk about the off week leading in. Sanford did not have one until last week. And how does this play into this game this late in the year? There's just a few things. First of all, you get rest. Sanford's played nine straight weeks. They needed a week off just to get some guys healed up. You're not going to heal the, the major injuries, but those little nicks and dings that everybody gets during the course of a season. That allows Sanford to heal up, take a few days off, and then come back and prepare a few extra days for Tennessee Martin. And that's another thing. They had a little more time to game plan, a little more time to get their players used to what Tennessee Martin runs. So it's a double-edged sword that really helps them, uh, not only resting, but getting ready to play UT Martin. It certainly does. And I tell you what, we'll take a break. We'll come back. Tennessee Martin 1-8 out of the Ohio Valley Conference. And the Bulldogs at 5-4 and four, looking for a winning season, their second straight here at Cyber Stadium in the final home game. We'll take a break. We'll come back with more coverage here. Sanford and Tennessee Martin on the Alabama Cable Network. Welcome back here on the field for the pregame show with the Sanford Bulldogs, Tennessee Martin. Scott Griffin again with Colin Hutto. And this is a league Sanford does historically well against. They'd love to get the Ohio Valley because they're 22 and 9 in history against this league, which is always a pretty good football league. It is. And since we moved to 1AA, I was coaching here for three years, and we always played a lot of OVC teams. And that is a conference I think Sanford would fit well in, not only because of success, but just location. We're real close to those guys, and we've played them consistently well throughout the, the years at 1AA. Sanford has won 12 of the last 15 against the Ohio Valley Conference. Let's take a look at some of the principal factors in this game. We'll start with number seven, Bart Yancey. You've seen him line up at center. This will be his 44th straight start. And for a small guy, he's been a solid contributor here at this program, record holder. Here's a guy, 44 starts in a row. You can't uh, put a, a significant value on penciling in a guy in for four straight years. And that's nice, especially at the quarterback position, because that is your coach on the field. That's your leader, and Bart does a great job of that, being a coach's son. Uh, he has the leadership qualities that you like, and he has performed consistently well. The only record he does not hold uh, is total touchdown passes in a career, and he's real close to that. He's one away from tying, uh, two away from taking it over, but it's nice to have that solid rock, if you will, starting, especially at the quarterback position. He would love to break that record today. And by the way, on his fourth pass attempt today, it would be 1,000 for his career. Now let's take a look at one of the seniors that will be blocking for him that has helped keep this offensive line, which has performed admirably well this year. But Robert Dean has certainly been a factor and really playing at 70% all year. But he's a tough hombre in his final game. He is, and the, again, the leadership roles that are seen at quarterback are also seen at center. The center makes a great deal of the offensive line calls. He determines a lot of the blocking schemes, and that's a position you don't need to have an inexperienced player. Robert has given them uh, some stability playing at the center position, and that has been needed, and I know that he'll perform well here at his last home game. He's played every position in his career here at Samford. Now, another leader on defense, a guy that's been through a heck of a lot, Mike Dell, locally here from Inslee High School, the senior linebacker, about 6'3", 225. He's made a lot of tackles. He's come back from knee surgery. He's come back from broken legs, and he's a good one. He is, and he has apparently shown a lot of toughness coming back from all of those injuries, real serious injuries, not just a, a turned ankle, but broken bones, torn up knees. Uh, he has come back and performed extremely well. We had a player come through the, the screen there. That's always nice, too. But uh, he, he, leads, he gives a lot of leadership, too, on that defense that's played extremely well this year. I thought you were going to break down and hit him there for a moment. Now let's talk about Tennessee Martin. They're 1-8. This was a stellar game last year that Sanford was fortunate to win, breaking a touchdown run to win at 21-14 very late. This year's struggling one and eight and they've uh, changed quarterbacks Jeff McCrone who was a nice strong arm senior is now in the backup role his role has been taken by Rick Wilson a true freshman who is learning on the job here that's exactly right this is his first start in their 10th game of the season this is his first start at quarterback he played some last week he was 11 for 13 I believe uh, passing last week so he has some talent apparently he has done well at the quarterback spot but again there's added pressure when you're starting a game especially this late in the season he doesn't have that experience so that'll be a, a strong key for UT Martin and if Sanford can put pressure on him he could fold the Skyhawks have really nothing to lose they're playing a freshman quarterback they'll be dangerous averaging 250 yards of offense which isn't that 
a stellar a number, but Sanford right there with him at 250 yards of offense, so defensive plays may be a big key in this game. We'll see. Sanford going for a winning season. Tennessee Martin going for respect, R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Tennessee Martin and Sanford will wrap it up. We'll get ready for the kickoff here live from Cyber Stadium. Scott Griffin and Colin Hunter will take a break. We'll come back with more. The Bulldogs and the Skyhawks. Stay with us. For more than three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sports. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham, and Montgomery. Just the surface, you. And a little soft in the middle. We're cracking up back here, Bob. I'm frozen first. I'm frozen first. Yeah, it's it's again. Anything but Coca-Cola and we melt. I love it. Give me that Coca-Cola. Oh, you fool out. Hey, nice ceiling fan. That Coca-Cola. Rolex. Oh, 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 oh. Dive, dive, dive. Holy Coca-Cola. I'm just going to float around and soak this up for a while. Oh, delicious. Come here. One of the most exciting events in the history of Alabama high school sports is coming to Legion Field December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the best in classes 1 through 6A. Compete for a state championship in the inaugural Super 6 Championship. Tickets to this historic event can be purchased by calling 1-800-553-2947. Presented by Alabama Power, Mountain Dew, Sports First Baptist Health System, and Thompson Tracker Company. The Super 6 Championship. Be a part of history. These people are smiling because they're members of First Educators Credit Union. Since 1935, First Educators has made a financial difference for Alabama educators. As satisfied members, they're paying less for auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards, even earning interest on checking. And when it comes to savings, First Educators offers higher dividends. If your financial institution isn't giving you a reason to smile, call First Educators. Member accounts insured by NCUA. Welcome in to the Cyber Stadium. A gorgeous afternoon here for the Bulldogs and Tennessee Martin again. And we're about ready to kick it off. Sanford defers and they will kick and get the ball in the second half. We're glad you're with us here on the Alabama Cable Network. A bright, gorgeous day. The final home game for the Bulldogs and a lot to play for besides the seniors playing is that the Bulldogs going for a winning season this year as well. So they've got a Heck of a lot to play for, and Mike Howell, the junior out of Pelham, is set to kick off in just a moment. We're glad you're with us watching this game. Bulldogs five and four, the Skyhawks one and eight. There's the kick, sails out of bounds, so the Skyhawks, Lenny Harris lets it sail to his left and off the field of play, and they'll start at the 35-yard line. <laughs> there is your uh, starters. Rick Wilson, the freshman, getting the call for the Skyhawks. Lester's the fullback. Adam Joyney, uh, Joyner is the running back. Domaine Reeder, the wide receiver. Lenny Harris, the wide out. And then Chad Brewer, the tight end. Rick Wilson, the freshman, getting the start for the Skyhawks. You can see they're in twins left in the I formation. In motion is Cowan, who's the leading receiver for the Skyhawks. The handoff the fullback, and he's rudely met inside. That is uh, Adam Joyner, I should say, the tailback, and he is stopped there by Taylor and Eric Payne. Here's the lineman, Swearingen, Lawrence, Woody, Slaughter, and Coor for the Skyhawks. And we'll meet the Bulldogs defense. The Skyhawks in the white jerseys, white helmets, with the sky blue pants and orange trimming on the helmets and jersey numbers. Count in motion again, three wide receiver set from the 34. Wilson, three-step drop outside, he's got his man and he's dropped after about a seven yard gain. That's Domain Reeder, the 6'2 senior, who could go and get him well as well, averaging 17 yards a catch 
the dogs go with James Taylor, Lance Langdale, Colin Horst, the true freshman, Joe Michael Robertson, one of those seniors that will play in his last game, and Eric Payne, the sophomore linebacker out of Mississippi. Sanford, as you see, in the Navy jerseys with the red and white trim, the white helmets, the Navy stripe down the helmet with the red bordering on the pants and helmets here at Cyber Stadium. Third and four. Wilson on play action. He'll run around the end. He's got plenty of room. To the inside, the 50, to the Sanford side of things. So he'll pick up about eight or nine on that bootleg. And the Bulldogs will fool there. And Wilson picks up the first down. Defensively, Mike Dale, the senior. Marquise Wilder, the true freshman. Carney, a cornerback. Turner, a cornerback. Another senior. Khalif Stamp starts at a safety, as does Jeff Morris, who is tied for the all-time lead here single season. Seven interceptions, and he's had that for two or three games now, stuck at that number. First and 10 from the 49. Wilson and the two wide receivers in a slot. They'll run option. He's keeping, he's got a seam up to the 41. Joe Michael Robertson missed him, and Stamps almost overran the play, but got enough of Wilson to knock him down, but it'll be second and short, and watch the good play by Wilson. And you hate to see them getting the running game going. They come in averaging only 60 yards rushing Wilson per game, and you've seen two nice Martin. runs by the quarterback. Play he does have 21 carries coming into this game, so he's not afraid to, to pull the ball down on the option. They only average 60 yards rushing, as you said, and uh, they probably have close to half to that now, or very getting close to that. Second and two. Wilson hands off. Joyner, nice move to get on the outside. And look at the tough running by Joyner bouncing off Bulldogs all over the place. He's inside the 40, and it'll be about a footballing shy of the first down. And Joyner, that's why they do the spin drill for running backs. And uh, the Bulldogs will have to lock up today. And again, the Skyhawks with playing for pride right here. The Bulldogs playing for a winning season, but sometimes when you're playing loose, you are more effective. That's right, they have not done very well offensively coming into this game, and you do worry about them just you know, throwing caution to the wind and playing loose and having a good game. Sanford has got to get them down because it would be easy to discourage them if Sanford puts them down early and not let them get anything started. Third and about a football league. Sanford with a seven men on the line. Wilson, the long count, hands to Joyner. He stopped immediately. Mike Dale's in there, also stamps. And uh, I think Fred Bishop and Wilder also got a piece of them, the two freshman mates from Central High School. They came in on Joyner and watched this penetration. And they just came in and jacked him up. That's great defense, and that's what Sanford need to have happen. You see UT Martin's punting team coming out on the field. Sanford, if they can just keep them from doing anything on their first few drives, they've got a chance to put this game away early. Fred Bishop crashing in Boy, there. He Pete Hurd loves to see that. Fourth down and about a yard and a half. And coming on to kick is... Uh, John Hume averaging 32 yards a kick. Deep for the dogs is Jerome Russell, the freshman out of Woodlawn. There's the kick of the anglet to the numbers. Almost hit stamps. Russell grabs it anyway and returns a couple of yards. A dangerous play there, but he may have saved four or five yards. So Russell gets away with it. Turns out to be a nice play by the freshman and the Bulldog offense will trot on the field. Jerome Russell feels the punt. We'll show you the lineup. Yancey, the quarterback, his 44th start. Whaley, I should be Sean Williams, perhaps getting the start at fullback. We'll see. James Griffith, the tailback. Brown, Watson, and Knox, the tight end. There were some injuries. Now, Michael Porter will start. They'll start at the three wide receiver set, the senior. Whaley is getting the start, the walk on fullback out of Estavia High School here in Birmingham. Three wide receiver set, no tight end for the dogs. They'll pitch back to James Griffith. And Griffith will get up to the 15 yard line. He'll gain a couple up there. The sophomore from Mississippi. Here's the beef for the Bulldogs. 24. Who they James hope Griffith, their bite is worse than their bark. Travis, West, Jernigan, Dean, Antonio Stoke. Burgess. Burgess, 6'6", 305. They need a game out of him to get the running on the corners where they want it. Porta checks out now. The tight end is Knox. Brown and Watson go wide right. Second and seven for the 15. Yancey will run option now. Pitches it. Loose football, but Griffith will pick it up and still get two or three around in. Yancey was running it and getting a piece of him over there. I believe that was uh, 
Well, let's take a look and see who it is instead of guessing. 24, James Griffith. I couldn't tell it on the replay, Scott. I couldn't tell who got it from behind, but that's a dangerous pitch. You see the ball, a pitch on the ground, uh, especially that deep in your own territory, and that's a dangerous thing. Defensive line, Lawless Tharp Reynoldson. Stobridge, who had the uh, play there, Stobridge. And then Swift, who's very dangerous. We'll look at the defensive backs in just a moment. Third and four from the 18. Twins left, pitch back Griffith, trying to get on the corner. And not much happening over there. Ramondia Weems in on the tackle. Very small at 185. There is a flag down, and we'll see what that's all about. The referee's conferring. James Griffith carries for the Bulldogs. Play loses three yards. There's a flag. They lost the three on the play, and we'll see here. Holding against the Bulldogs declined, and... That'll bring on the punting unit for Samford, and it will be, there's the backs real quick, Ramondia Williams who made that play, Schumacher, Jones, Harris, Johnson, and Nasty Smoke Beard. I wondered uh, why they didn't call him Nasty, but they call him Smoke. Rackley, the backup quarterback, you always got to be wary of him, but probably nothing happening this deep in the territory. He is on to kick. He punts it up high, Rackley. Fielded there, and there's a boy got away. Look at the little scat back, and that's Terrence Smith from Fort Walton Beach, California, who gets away and returns it to the 46 of Sanford. So good field position for the Skyhawks, and there's another jitterbug. You better get your hands on. Well, that's good. They closed him in. He got away from the initial tackle, but Sanford. Over there to make the tackle, and you know, right off the bat, you see both of these teams who are struggling offensively this year only average about 250 yards per game, and they're really searching for an offensive identity here. First and 10 for the Bulldogs is 30 yard kick by Rackley, who's averaging 29.6. Wilson on the option, the spacing wasn't there, and Mike Dale really brings him down. He got great help on that corner coming up, Carney and Stamps, but Dale, the senior chasing him down number 56 watch him on his outside backer position as he plays it beautifully he does you see him shuffling down the line of scrimmage and that's the one thing a defensive man cannot do is get his shoulders turned when you're playing the option you cannot commit to a man until you know who is going to be carrying the ball at the end and you see the the residual effect of Sanford playing that wishbone team a couple weeks ago or last week and they're ready for the option in that case it's almost like a basketball player playing defense exactly. shuffling your feet across the field Second and 10, shotgun. Wilson will go outside, he throws it behind his man. He had slipped down over there, Reeder, and he had, uh, Wilson threw it inside, and Reeder could not twist his torso over there to make the grab, so it'll be third and 10. And you can see right off the bat, both of them, again, are struggling offensively, looking for something good to happen. Uh, coming in, averaging only 250 yards per game. Uh, they really need to get the, the offense going. Both teams really need to establish the run to help them with the passing game, and you're not seeing seeing that yet out of either team. Third and 10. In motion is Cowan, but two receivers up top. Wilson getting hit, throws the screen, late developing, but they get it there anyway, and he's close to a first, but it will be half a yard shy. Boy, that looks strange. You knew something was happening there because too many people were coming in on Wilson. And then Cowan was late. He had gone in motion up top and then delayed the screen over the middle and picks up about nine, but he'll be short. And now uh, question time. Looks like they're going for it. For the Skyhawks, but they won't have a question. Here it is. It'll be very late developing, too late for Rick Wilson's liking. Yeah, that's a, nice, that's a screen across the middle that allows an offensive lineman to get downfield since it's thrown across the middle. And here we go, fourth and fourth and short. Sanford needs to make a stand. Fourth and one. Pitch back, Joyner. Around in, he'll try to dive for it. It'll be very, very close. He got tripped up at the backfield by Carney, but lunged forward. And Dale, you see, trying to stop his momentum with his shoulder. We'll see what they, how they mark it. This will be measured. That is going to be extremely tight. They, they're they waving it and they're going to measure. I don't, I can't tell from here. Damon Atwater is the team's leading rusher, injured a knee late in the game last week. He is, uh, probably will not play in this game. Also, Charlie Gill is, uh, 
questionable as well. The Skyhawks averaging 60 yards a and game, and they stopped them. They ran the ball and uh, moved it a bit, but they stopped them on that fourth down play. And Carney got enough of him out there to give the Bulldogs field position now. So the Skyhawks gambled and lose on the field position battle. And Pete Hurt, very thankful of that. And that's a great defensive stand. You're right, gives Sanford great field position starting on that 36. And you, it's got to be a bad sign when you only average 60 yards a game rushing and your starting tailback gets hurt. You're in a world of hurt offensively. You're going to have a hard time moving the football. Sanford coming out, first and 10 from the 36. Yancey dropping back play action. Looking in the flats is Whaley. He's got plenty of room. He'll bust forward to the 50-yard line, and he'll have a first down, a 13-yard catch by Whaley, who is, again, the redshirt freshman, played for a former Bulldog, Buddy Anderson of S. Davey, and those guys are hard-nosed, and they know the game, and you can tell here. That's a great play out in the flat. Again, everybody has this play in their repertoire. They throw the ball out in the flat after running the receivers off deep. And if the pass is made, you get a nice gain like you saw there. Bill Gray likes the kid Whaley at fullback. Com coming in now, Griffith lining up at fullback with Russell at tailback. A little more speed in there for the Bulldogs. There's the hand to Griffith, quick opener. He's in the secondary spinning, and look at Griffith go for 13. A guy last year that had almost 700 yards rushing in his true freshman year. This year has been injured, but still with 292 yards, now he's over 300, and look at the tough running by Griffith. And that's just a quick hit and trap, but once that trap is made, if the running back gets into the secondary, gets to the linebackers, as you saw there, you've got a tailback now handling the ball instead of a fullback, and you have the potential to get a big gain like you saw there. Porter checks out. The tight end, Knox, checks in. Watson up top. Brown, excuse me, Watson to the right. Brown up top in your screen. Bluffed on going in motion there. First and 10 from the 37. Now Brown in motion out of the I formation, and that's uh, a penalty there. Brown started to move. He got set again, but they'll call delay of game there. Bart Yancey not uh, feeling comfortable with the set and did not burn a timeout there. So delay of game, offense, they five yards, repeat first down. They wait on the delay of game there. So that'll change the play, first and 15. And he needs to turn off his <laughs> microphone. Here we go again. There you go. First and 15. Porter up top. Brown down low. Watson in the slot. There's the hand to Griffith, trying to find room. Sneaks out on the outside and will pound forward for about three. And it'll be second and 12. The tackles down by a host of Skyhawks on the play. Made over there. I think Strollbridge was in there. Also, Ramondio Williams on that outside getting a piece of Griffin. And you see James, when he first started this year, he's running real tentatively with that injured ankle. But now right there, you saw him run extremely hard. And that's good to see, especially coming into next year. You hope that he can do something today to build on next year. Both teams, 33 yards total offense combined. They've run up a, a few first downs. Now one of the officials had me was pushing me off. Second and 12. Yancey drops back. Inside, there's Watson. He'll have the first down. Michael Watson, a big playman for the Bulldogs. He's dropped some passes this year, and he's made some NFL-type catches. You can see he has the Sunday body, as we call it. 6'4", 205. Watch Watson as we isolate on him. Watson makes a great catch here, Scott, but Bart makes an outstanding throw. If you see here, he throws right between two defenders, and that is a dart right in there, and that's a great pass. Good adjustment as he threw around the torso. And excellent camera work by our Alabama Cable Network crew. First and 10 from the 27. Delay to Griffith. And he is dropped in the backfield. Good play there on the penetration by Jamie Reynolds, 6'2", 260-pound senior. Getting in the backfield to slow up Griffith with one arm until his teammates came over there. And it'll be, he got about a yard, second and nine. Well, unfortunately, that's the way I used to make plays. When it was a draw, they try to let you rush. I couldn't rush the passer even on a draw, and I think that's what you saw there. Defensive lineman got pinned on the line of scrimmage and made the play on the draw. Second down from the 26. Split receivers. Yancey, play action. He's got Watson again open, and he dropped it. And that's what we just mentioned. 
He makes a great catch in the middle, and then that time Yancey delivered it right to him, and Michael dropped it. The redshirt freshman. Watch this is perfect. It is. He hit him right in the hands again. But I've heard several coaches say in the past couple of weeks the best thing about a freshman is next year they'll be a sophomore, and that's little freshman Ida still going on right there. And you know he had his eyes checked. Pete heard he dropped several passes last week while still making seven catches for 95 yards. And Pete heard said let's get his eyes checked, and they found out that Michael is colorblind. Is that right? And uh, had some problems. We'll talk about that in a moment. Yancey drops back, third and ten. Wide open is Watson. He runs out of bounds. He had the touchdown, but his momentum ran him out of bounds. So the Skyhawks getting a break there, but Watson made it, and Yancey threw it perfectly to the freshman. And again, you see Bart throwing passes that he There he is, uh, by the way, excuse me. That's his right. thousandth career pass. Bart Yancey, that arm, I guess, needs to be ice after throwing that many. <laughs> Well, that's a lot of pass. That's good to see. He just still needs that touchdown passing mark for a career, and, and he will hold every single passing record in Sanford history. First and goal. Yancey, three out of four for 43 yards. They'll try Watson on the timing pattern, and he drops it. Mm. Had it in his hands. They were going against Chris Jones over there, Rod Harris. I think it's Rod Harris at 5'10", and Watson again at 6'4". And again, it's right there, but uh, Harris, I believe, will give him credit for knocking that ball loose, but again, another beautifully thrown pass by Ensign. No doubt, looks like Coach Hurt wants to get Bart that record, but since Bart's done so much for the program, looks like he's going to pay him back, and that's nice to see. One touchdown will tie him yep. for touchdown passes. Two will break it. Yancey on the option, keeping, and he'll sneak forward for a couple. Tackle over there, get a piece of him. Right Number 36, Anthony Sawyer, a linebacker. Who's not on the depth chart. <laughs> not on the two-deep depth chart. And there's a nice hit there by Harris coming up for the cornerback position as well. Third and goal from the seven. And you got to think they're going to put it in the air here. And I know those receivers are going to be working hard to help Bart out. I hope they get open and get him somebody to throw to. Tenth play of the drive that began after stopping the Skyhawks on fourth down. Third and goal. Yancey throwing it up to Brown, and that's a nice play. Shielding him from it was Chris Jones over there, shielding him enough to keep Brown off, and Brown looking for help, but I don't think he called pass interference on that. You see him just slightly leaning in towards him, not letting him get there, and he quickly checked with the official, but I think that's a good no call because he really didn't push him. No, he's looking back at the ball, and again, both guys have the equal right or equal opportunity to go get the football, and as long as the defender's looking back at the ball and really not shoving on the offensive man, they're not going to call it. You're right, that's a good no call. Mike Howell is on for the kick. This is from 24 yards. The junior from Pelham kicks it up. It is good. So Howell puts the Bulldogs on the board, three to nothing. And Sanford takes the early lead on the junior's kick from 24. And the referee down here, Scott. because they're members of First Educators Credit Union. Since 1935, First Educators has made a financial difference for Alabama educators. As satisfied members, they're paying less for auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards, even earning interest on checking. And when it comes to savings, First Educators offers higher dividends. If your financial institution isn't giving you a reason to smile, call First Educators. Member accounts insured by NCUA. Here in the record, Bart Yancey's chasing one of the few he needs, the 34th touchdown held by Jimbo Fisher, who my fellow man Colin Hunto played with here in his senior year, and he did it in one year, but even beyond one year. Scott, I, just, I figured it up at the end of our senior season. The starting team on offense and defense that year only played a total of seven and a half games. So Jimbo threw 34 touchdown passes in seven and a half games and only threw three interceptions. And he is now the offensive coordinator at Auburn under uh, quarterback coach. Terry Bowden, excuse me, quarterback coach under Terry Bowden at Auburn. And the run back was to the 27 yard line. 23, Chris, Chris Wright making and that's where the Skyhawks will start. Bulldog drive, 11 play, 57 yards in three minutes and 48 seconds. 
First and 10, Skyhawks. Split receivers, I formation. Their normal package. Wilson rolling right. Throws it out there and through the hands of his intended receiver, Brewer, from the tight end slot. A little bit too hard for Wilson. And while he's over there, he'll grab a play and run back to the huddle. It looks like they're going to try to make a living off that bootleg. And it had been too successful up until now. And that's a tough pass, especially for a guy who hadn't started trying to throw the ball on the run. That's a tough pass to make. Second and 10 from the 27. Sanford leading three to nothing. 406 to go first quarter. Sanford showing blitz. Here they come. Wilson reads it. There's the screen from the wide receiver position. And it'll get a few in there. I think there's Lenny Harris over the middle for seven. Harris with his 31st catch on the year, and he's gone for 83 yards on one of them. He's a good one at 5'11", 170 pounds, and a senior. And there's Wilson with a good vision to see the blitz and throw it to Harris. And that's the screen you saw earlier that you were talking about took so long to develop. Looks like they corrected the problem on the sideline and got it off quick. And Langdale quick enough to come back and make that tackle. Third and three. Backup defensive line in for the Bulldogs. There's the handoff to Joyner. He's got room around in. And boy, Eric Turner really <laughs> bust him out of bounds. The senior out of West End, his shoulder must be feeling better. He's been be <laughs> nagging all year with a bad shoulder, but I think uh, he's juiced up for this final home game in Cyber Stadium. Watch him jack Adam Joyner. He jacks him up. He knocks him in the next week. That's a nice shot. It's not really from the blind side. That's a, usually looks like a blind side shot, but that's a big time hit. That's nice to see. The Bulldog getting the crowd into it. First and 10, however, on the joiner carry to the 47. Three to nothing here in the first quarter. Wilson split receivers, broken eye. Joiner around right tackle. Got some room over there as well. Or he's hit by Ackland and Joe Michael Robertson, among others. But another positive gain on first down of five yards. Well, you really hate to see him getting this running game going because, again, what they have tried to live on is passing. They only pass for about 200 yards a game, 197 yards a game, and rush for 60. So if they get the rushing game going, that's going to do nothing but open up the passing game. So you hate to see this start. Martin with 35 yards rushing for the Skyhawks. They only average 60, second, and we'll call it six. Wilson in the shotgun. Four wide receivers set, five guys going out. They spread the field and let Wilson run the sneak. And he got up there and then started chopping the feet when he saw a blue jersey. And he's knocked down just short of the first down. I believe Buchanan in on the tackle. And there. Hey, there you go. Is, well, it's not the homecoming queen, but I think most of you folks know <laughs> Cindy Crawford. What in the heck is she doing here? Enjoying another bulldog outing. Yeah. Third and about a yard shy. Seemed a little flat today. <laughs> yes, she did. A little on the flat side. From the 43. Stafford looking a bit confused in the defensive line, and they'll use a timeout. So we'll take timeout here. Two minutes exactly to go in the first quarter. The Bulldogs on top, three to nothing. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. of Alabama High School Sports is coming to Legion Field December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the best in classes 1 through 6A. Compete for a state championship in the inaugural Super 6 Championship. Tickets to this historic event can be purchased by calling 1-800-553-2947. Presented by Alabama Power, Mountain Dew, Fort First Baptist Health System, and Thompson Tracker Company. The Super 6 Championship. Be a part of history. There's the panning from the crowd here at Cyber Stadium. Gorgeous setting, as good as you'll find in college football. Right here below Shades Mountain, and the trees start to turn. And gorgeous Cyber Stadium here, where you played, my friend. It's quite picturesque. Beautiful. There's the chapel Beautiful. in the background. Where I should have spent more time. Martin, two out of four on third downs, or a yard shy here from the 43. Hand off to the fullback, and he'll be very close. He was dumped. That's Stacy Lester, 230-pound sophomore, 
And Bernard Wagu in on the tackle. And I think they're going to be short. They come into this into this game, Scott, this year only averaging 27% conversions on third downs. And you can see their, their lack of capability of performing there on third down. Again, third and less than a yard, and they don't make it. Carlton Cisco on to kick now. Senior out of River Ridge, Louisiana, after J.J. Brown punted a moment ago. Fourth and about a yard. They won't chance it. They went for it last time and didn't make it. Cisco with a booming kick. Too good, I think. And that bounds in the end zone. 43 yards, and it went about 50. I think that lets so that boy punt all the time. Too good a kick, and the Bulldogs force it to get that at the 20-yard line. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Bar Yancey will trot on the field. Jerome Russell checks in. As they get last minute instructions, Pete Hurt looking for a winning season, number two in a row in his third year as head coach here at Sanford. And again, Sanford against non ranked teams and teams that aren't Division I, 12 and 3. So they beat teams they're supposed to. The next step is to beat teams they're not supposed to. Griffith, tailback, running hard. He's over the 30. James Griffith, 200 pounds, which is pretty good for a tailback, but as you see, his legs the carry on the number very large and very, very strong. He loves to churn those thighs. And that's, uh, that's a good sign. You see him turn up field and actually cut back, and that shows that that ankle is fully healed now, and he's running like he did last year. And that's what Sanford needs to do. I mean, the strength of their offense is running. The weakness of the UT Martin defense is trying to defend the run. They're giving up over 200 yards a game rushing, and Sanford just needs to take control of that big offensive line and run the football. Griffith with 29 yards on seven carries, first and 10. Hand off, Griffith again, they'll work him. He'll get a couple inside before he is knocked out there. And uh, Weems was in on that tackle also Reynoldson as well. Swift is the big playmaker, number 86. A hundred two tackles so far this year. 6'3", 225 pound junior, but six tackles for losses, two sacks, got an interception, five recovered fumbles. He's around the football. Oh, he's a football player. And he is in the middle of the field. We have yet to really call his name. Second and eight. Mike Brown in motion. Delay, Griffith trying to get on the outside. Whaley got a good block with his man. Griffith mm. just can't get out there. Nice shoestring tackle over there on the last play of the first quarter by Weems, who's played a fine game for the Skyhawks. First quarter is over. Three to nothing, Sanford on top of Tennessee Martin. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. In three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sport. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham and Montgomery. blowing in the breeze and the nice breeze here in the fall afternoon in middle of November the first quarter stats Sanford five first downs to Martins two 35 yards rushing to 39 for the Skyhawks 43 passing for the Bulldogs to 23 so 78 62 total offense Sanford leads that in the first quarter we're heading to the second quarter third and eight Three wide receivers set. Yancey under pressure, throws it away. Good play by Bart just to get it out of there. 
And uh, Sanford will have to punt and Bart. There's the senior leadership throwing it away instead of taking the loss. Yeah, and he's lucky there was no grounding penalty call. It really wouldn't have affected him that much, but there was not a single receiver out there. So Bart, like you say, making a smart play and getting rid of the ball instead of taking the sack. Sanford Athletics proud to have Birmingham Coca-Cola as a corporate partner. Coca-Cola's partnership Vital Lawyer is the Bulldogs athletics program. Always for the fans, always Coca-Cola. Rackley gets the kickoff. It's not a particularly good one. Bounces at the 42. It'll look good in the stats now as it takes a bulldog row inside the 30, just short of the 30. Rackley's punt good for 37 yards. 37-yard kick for Rackley, who is again the backup quarterback and has just punted only his second game here. Sanford looking for help in that department. For all your cellular service needs. Nice crowd on hand here, probably five, six thousand people. South Mobility can take care of your family plan or your corporate plan. Wilson bringing the Skyhawks out to the 30. Bell South Mobility is proud to be a sponsor of Sanford Athletics. Pitchback, Joyner. Dropped. Joyner dropped in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. James Taylor. Sweet baby back there making the play. <laughs> and James coming off winning the 1AA Independent Defensive Player of the Week, and you see why right there. That's right, made uh, 14 tackles last week. There's two weeks ago, I should say, against Wofford. Richard Kohler there with the defensive signals for the Bulldogs, second and 10. Wilson will be in the shotgun this time. He's got the four wide receiver set. Looking left, throwing left, got his man. Reader's uh -oh. got it, and he's on the roll. Oh, and he's jacked there, and he's dropped at the 45. Great play for Reeder, but really jacked. Was that Turner that came Corey up Carney. again? Or Corey Carney came up and, and tried to knock Reeder off his feet, but watch him go to the inside as Darnell still overran the play. And Carney just comes up and smacks him right in the mouth. That's a nice shot, and that, that's nice to see. But you hate to see him getting that big gain on a pass. It should have been, you know, held a four or five yard gain. 25 yard play for Reeder. Again, averaging 17.3. You see there with that speed, 6'2", 185, very rangy. There's Wilson again on the outside. This time, Reeder makes the catch, and Steele does not overrun the play as he makes the tackle. But he's still there to pick up six, or excuse me, four, the way they mark it, to the 41-yard line. Yeah, and Reeder has the longest, 52 yards, so he can break away, as you saw there, but he can go the, go the distance. He went for a 52-yard touchdown earlier in the year. They have uh, playmakers at wideouts if they can get them the football. Wilson, again, 11 out of 13 last week. The freshman, the third quarterback to play with the Skyhawks this year. Handoff joiner, backfield, didn't fool anybody. James Taylor drops Joyner in his tracks. They're back at the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be third and 10. Yeah, Sanford is all over that. That draw fooled no one. That's a nice play. Langdale was there as well, just to make sure. We'll call it third and nine. Football just inside the 45. Three to nothing dog. Four wide receiver set, shotgun for Wilson. Sanford on the blitz, Wilson throws it out and a great diving catch over there by Cowan. The freshman at 180 leads his team and catches with 32 of his second catch of the day and that was uh, Elmer's glue version. Getting that one on the delivery from Wilson. That was a great catch. He reaches that way in front of his body and stabs the ball. I mean, that ball hit and stuck. That's ex outstanding hands. He caught it like he ought to. He caught it in his fingertips. Makes a great stab. First and 10 for the Skyhawks. They'll keep that four wide receiver set going. They like it. Shotgun again for Wilson. Steele looks like he's coming from top, and he does. Wagu coming from the middle. There's the blitz, and if you break it, he might be gone, and he is. To the 10, the 5, fumbles the football. Mike Dale falls on it. Lenny Harris had a touchdown and fumbled the ball inside the 5. Dale falls on it. The senior with a recovered fumble and Sanford dodges a bullet. They dodge a big time bullet right there. And that's the screen that they've run two or three times already. And you see the wide receiver break it. And it looks like he's gonna walk in for the touchdown. 
But you see a nice play right there again. Who Eric was that? Turner. Turner makes a great play, causing a fumble. And how about Dale uh, not giving up on the play right. from an outside backer position? There's a guy with ACL surgery, a guy that broke his leg, coming back his senior year, still got four, six, four, five, five speed. Tracking the fumble down. So, Skyhawks with a big turnover. Sanford would like to take advantage. Twins left, I formation. Yancey, quick popper to Brown. Great block by Michael Watson. Brown will get seven or eight, but Michael Watson traded some leather with somebody there on the crackback. And that was a gorgeous block. We'll take a look on the replay as Brown gets eight. Watch Watson there on the good block. And again, Watson with that body gives you two nice things. It gives you a nice big target. But Sanford likes that quick hitch to the wide receiver with Watson out in front blocking. With his size, he is a, a great lead blocker. Second and nine. Brown with his 23rd catch of the year in his senior season. Coming off knee problems last year, only playing a handful of games. Russell inside. He'll be close to the first. There's some popping going on. There sure is. Down there, a lot of trading the paint. Jordan in on that tackle. First down for Russell on the two-yard gain. The dogs at the 31. And that's good to see. You got a spirited football game going on with both teams with the records they have. Some, you know, they might come in flat, but neither team has come in flat. They're playing good football. First and ten. Dogs three wide receiver set. Yancey play action. He'll roll right. Got a man. It's Watson. He drops it. Right in his hands. At the 48, Bart Yancey cannot throw it better than that. No. Again, all he could have done more was catch it for him. And again, I don't know if that color Yancey blindness affects catching the football. Well, Watson has stitches above his eye. Yeah. He is, they found out he was colorblind, and he got hit in the head to get those <laughs> stitches. And they're saying maybe he had a partially, possibly partially detached retina that, you know, did not require surgery or anything. But, you know, these are things that the eye doctor said could have happened because he'd been knocked in the head. and uh, But he has dropped some passes. That's two today. And he dropped a ton last week. Yancey over the middle. There's Porter, and it's in his hands. But he dropped it because he got speared in the back by Mike Jordan. Porter, the senior out of Nashville, Florida, had his hands on it. It was a little high, but Jordan was there to knock it away. So it's third and ten. And that was a good defensive play there. He got drilled right in the back, and that's a tough one to hang on to when you're stretched out trying to catch the ball. Do what? Yancey, four out of ten now, and really unfortunate, he should be about eight out of ten. Yeah. For 52 yards. Third and ten. Yancey will have to go shotgun now. Three wide receiver set. Brandon Gable, the freshman, at the bottom of the screen. Yancey drops back. Throws, Porter opens, got this one past the chains first down. And there's Porter, the senior. Senior to senior there. Mike with his 98th catch of his career. And I got to think we're going to see that play again later. You see Bart deliver the ball here, but Michael Brown was running deep, and he was wide open. I got to think the coaches upstairs saw that, and I think we'll see that play a little bit later in the game. Rod Harris on the tackle. Gable checks out, Griffith back in. First and 10 at the 42, back-to-back -back first downs. Jamal Bird running off the field now, fullback as well. So they'll have Griffith at fullback again. Russell at tailback, and now timeout. They don't have the personnel in there they want. And the play clock was getting down. Yancey calls time. We'll take a break. Three to nothing, Sanford over Tennessee Martin. You're listening to, excuse me, you're watching Sanford Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. We'll be back. The worries of being 65. My biggest worry? How cold the water's gonna be. Well, I guess this ape it's on my roses. Are the bluegills biting? <laughs> At age 65, the least of your worries should be your health care coverage. Call this toll-free number and find out about the worry-free health care plan from Seniors First. Seniors First pays 100% of your hospitalization. There are no monthly plan premiums and no deductibles. You also receive annual physicals. You pay only $10 per doctor visit, and you receive $100 toward eyeglasses and much more. Stop worrying about your health care coverage and start worrying about the more important things in life. Spending enough time with my grandchildren. Seniors First, the worry-free Medicare plan. 
Call 1-800-310-1919 to sign up now. That's 1-800-310-1919. Throughout the 96 season. Thank you for supporting the Bulldogs. First and 10, Yancey drops back. Whoa! Oh, oh, my goodness. My. Jamal Bird got jacked over there by Ramondio <laughs> Eames, and Bird is up and shaking out the cobwebs. Yancey threw it, and Bird got his hands on it. Watch the hit here. We told you it was a hard hit game. Brother, he gets drilled, and they're going to have to ask him what day it is. <laughs> That's a highlight film hit right there. I like to see that. I hate that it happened to Sanford, man, but that's a nice shot. Weems with a beautiful hit there. And to Bird's credit, he got up and jogged off the yes, field. Sir. And usually the good hits don't hurt anybody. Second and 10. Crisp afternoon, and these guys are playing crisp. They're getting into it. There's a handoff to Griffith from the fullback position. This time he'll get two or three. And it'll be third and seven on the play. Oh. What a nice hit. Sort of woke us up up here. Yeah, late. Didn't mean to scream to you folks at home, but that was a, a big time hit. Griffith with his 10 carries now for 35 yards. There he is jumping off the uh, field there. Third and about seven from the 44. Whaley the fullback, Russell the tailback. Split receiver. Yancey drives back, got a man, it's Brown in the middle of the field. Michael sheds one tackler and gets to the 31, and there's the speed from the former Juco player from Mississippi with his 24th catch, and his career started slowly. Again, only played four games knee injury, but he has come on the last half of his senior year. He sure has, and that's a nice route, nice square end pattern. Bart is delivering the ball extremely well today, though. Everything he has thrown just about has been on the money. He did stretch one receiver out, but he's hitting receivers right in the hands and allowing them to do something with the ball after they catch it. Brown with his 24th catch of the year. That one went for 25. First and 10, 31, and Yancey is throwing the ball beautifully. Split receivers. They'll pitch back to Griffith. They got the reverse. Brown back to Yancey, and he'll just throw it away. Nobody around. And they could have thrown intentional grounding on that as well, but uh, they give Bart the benefit of the doubt. And that play was doomed from the beginning. Yeah, he was looking for Porter deep, and Michael was covered. There was two men down there with him, so that was a, a good play by Bart throwing it out of bounds. And one thing, if there's a receiver anywhere in the path of the ball when it's thrown out of bounds, they're usually not going to call grounding the football. Pete Hurt looking around. Second and 10. Three wide receivers at I formation. Yancey, play action, getting rushed. Nice pickup block there by Bird. He delivers it to Porter, and he's thrown out of bounds. But forward progress will give him the first down at the 20. Porter with his second catch, number 99. The next one for him will be 100. Yes. Watch the pickup block here by Griffith. I you better believe say. that's a good block. That 47 was barreling down on Bart. And I'm going to tell you, he is really delivering the ball well. One thing you worry about when the wind's blowing like it is today, pretty stiff breeze, unless you throw a tight spiral, that ball is not going to travel like you want it to. And that's the key to throwing the ball in this wind is throwing a tight spiral so it just cuts straight through the wind. First and 10 dogs from the 20. Three to nothing, 8-19 to go here in the first half. Three wide receiver set. Now Griffith will vacate the backfield. Whaley, the lone back. They'll throw it out to Brown. He's got it at the 20, and he'll get three over there on the little screen. And good to see James Griffith going after guys blocking uh, a bit. He attacked the corner out there on the replay. You'll see. It looked like we had a little confusion between the wide receivers on exactly who was supposed to catch the ball. But you're right. James gets downfield after the catch is made and makes a nice block. And there's a tackle by John Swift yard line. from his middle linebacker position, getting out there very quickly. And that's why he's got a, over 100 for the year. Number 86 for the Skyhawks. Second and seven. Gable up top, Porter, Brown down low. I formation. Yancey, the hand to Whaley, the walk on fullback, and he's dropped right there. Tackle on that side made by Anthony Sawyer. There he is, number 36, and it'll number be third and four. For the 
These days, you don't need a health plan. You need a health partner. And Health Partners of Alabama will help you break through the clutter of the health care industry. Their mission is to provide quality care while managing medical costs. Choose Health Partners of Alabama. Ask your company about it. Third and five. Split receiver, I have formation, long count by Yancey. They'll do the option. Russell out there, and the flags are down. Russell knocked out. He'll be short of the first down, but all kind of flags coming. Laundry everywhere. I think we're going to have a couple of penalties on this play. Looks like holding out in front and holding in the middle of the line. The referee's conferring. And we'll see what the indication is. By referee Art Massey, and there's the preliminary indication, and a face mask, Skyhawks. There are offsetting penalties on the play. First, a hold oh, against Sanford. On the offense, five yard face mask, face mask on the Sanford. defense. Penalties will offset, repeat, third down. So, a break for Out Sanford in that regard that they'll repeat the down because they were short. There, and Mr. Massey forgetting once again to turn off his microphone. There he goes. He used to do that before he toots the whistle. Third and four. Yes, Yancey will go shotgun this time. Five wide receivers go out. Got There's it. the throw to Porter, and he's very close to the touchdown, but they won't give it to him as he just fell short of the line there. Five, Mike Porter. Watch him deliver the ball. Yancey's like a Nolan Ryan today. I'm telling you, he's out of his mind. He is doing great. Every pass he has thrown has been sharp on the money, and that rascal needs to turn that dang microphone off. I don't know if they can hear that on TV, but I don't like that in my ear. And I don't know if the truck can turn that down separately or not. First and goal, 621. Hand off, Whaley. Trying to go in there, nothing. Not much happening in there. That's a nice play on the inside there. Sawyer in there again for the Skyhawks. Swift also there. And there's Big Sawyer. Jim Whaley on the 6'1, 220 senior out of Aliceville, Alabama. So he's a little pumped up. From the one. You okay? Thank you. Skyhawks putting in different packages. Eric Turner viewing his offensive teammates' performance. And his hard hitting game. Three to nothing. Bulldogs on top, second, and a yard. The Yancey will handle Whaley. This he time did. they'll try and left guard, and he's in. Jim Whaley with the touchdown, but a flag is down on the sideline in the vicinity of offsides or motion, and we'll see what this is all about. Whaley's carry is good for a touchdown. Nope. There's a penalty. That signal play. means touchdown. Offsides against the Skyhawks. They'll decline so the they'll decline it. The and the Bulldogs the get the touchdown. Jim Whaley, the walk-on freshman, nudges in from a yard away. Well, he's got to be excited getting his first touchdown. back that's what people like to see on the goal line and it goes for six and he ran behind the senior Robert Dean there to get the six Howell is on for the extra point Yancey will hold Judge Jernigan will snap the starting center it is down it is up it is good the dogs are on top 10 to nothing here as they head towards a winning season, back-to-back -to -back winning seasons. That's what they're hoping for. 10 to nothing, Sanford over UT Martin. We'll take a break here. You're watching Sanford Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. For more than three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sports. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham, and Montgomery. Bulldogs on top 10 to nothing. Scott Griffin here. Also, Colin Alto, the former dog, and Dr. Digit, Ashley Stevenson, as always, the best in the business, providing numbers, telling us 15 play, 80-yard drive in 6-10, this after the fumble. 
So a fourth down stoppage and a fumble setting up the Bulldog scores. Yancey five out of seven on the drive. There's the kick at the 14. Fielded there and jumping up in the air to the 30 is Chris Jones and there's flags down. We'll see what that's all about. And that's a quick 14 point swing right there, Scott. UT Martin going in for six, like you said, and an untimely fumble prevents them from scoring that touchdown. Sanford showing good character, taking the ball down the field, scoring a touchdown. So that's a big 14 point swing. Holding on the Skyhawks and I believe that is on Mark Neal, the defensive back out of Munford, Tennessee. I think you are correct. And we say hello to our friends up in Martin, Tennessee, watching this rebroadcast. We thank you for tuning us in. The holding indication again. On the run back, 10 yards, first down. And again, they're just not playing on full cylinder, the leading rusher out. Sanford knows exactly what that's all about. Don McCleary, his second decade there. Having some injury problems. First and 10, Skyhawks. Wilson on the bootleg again. It worked early in the first half for some yardage, and it'll get six or seven there. Wilson tackled by sweet baby James Taylor on the outside, and he's on his way to another stellar performance. He had 14 tackles Wilson two weeks ago the player of the week across the, the nation. And that's a big time play. JT knows that he doesn't have many games left, so he wants to make the tackles as, as much as he can. And that's going to be bad if they're going to rely on that. Oh, I knew that this year. He's a sophomore. Thank you. Second and four. I'm struggling today. Wilson in the shotgun. Throws it out to bounds to Harris. And he'll have the first down over there, very close. Right at the 25, we'll see where they put the sticks. Plays coming in from the Martin sideline. There's Lester coming in. Wilson, He's driven out of bounds not bad for a freshman. I mean, he's delivering the ball with authority. Nick Spina in on that tackle. First to 10 there. No, and again, last week he was 11 for 13, so apparently he knows what to do with the football. And that third again, the third quarterback that has played for the Skyhawks. He's eight out of 10 for 100 yards. So he's only had four incompletions the last two weeks. There's the draw to Joyner. And he'll run hard past the 30. Eric Payne getting a piece of Joyner. He'll get five over that left side on the draw. And it'll be second and five. Langdale there as well. And again, very impressed with the hitting of both the schools. They're spirited game today. No doubt, and Sanford does have something to play for. They got a chance for a winning season. UT Martin is playing extremely well. The coaches got them ready because they really have nothing to play for. They're at the 31, it'll be second and four. Wilson. Two. Joiner on the outside. And he's close to a first down over there. So the rushing attack that was averaging 60 yards and is without the leading rusher on the play doing pretty well. They that is 48 run. yards run. now. And uh, Joyner looks pretty good there as the backup tailback coming in. And I know they like to see that with the young guys in there, quarterback and tailback. And again, being on Sanford's side, you really hate to see that off that running game getting started because again, that's going to give them a chance to really open this thing up. While they, the one nice thing, they're only averaging 9.9 .9 points a game. So you would think Sanford would be all right. But again, they've should have had seven already. So Sanford's really lucky to be up 10 to nothing. Joyner has carried the ball 56 times entering the game for 250 yards as the first down. He's a freshman out of Collierville, Tennessee, a 5'10", 185, but always falling forward, always scrambling for that extra yard. You got to knock him to the turf. Sanford giving up 199 yards rushing. First and 10 per game, I should say. From the 35, Joyner found nothing inside, even worse outside. Joe Michael Robertson. 41, Adam Joyner on the carry for he engulfed him there. Joe Michael is all over that. 6'4", 250. And he is all over that. You see the running back trying to stick it up inside. Nothing there. He bounces right out into Joe Michael Robertson, who makes a nice tackle. 
and wrestles him to the ground like a rodeo. And there's a guy that's a, going to be a pharmacist. He's in pharmacy school now, taking 21 hours, won a $10,000 scholarship courtesy of Burger King, but changes personalities when he puts on a helmet. Number 16, Michigan. Standing up on this end, look at him. Rushing the quarterback, second and 15. Wilson over the middle to Lenny Harris, and it's out of his hand and falls to the turf. It'll be third and 15. Number 12, Tennessee, 28. Arkansas, 14. In the second quarter, Notre Dame, 26. Pittsburgh, zero. In the second quarter, Nebraska, 20. Skyhawks, zero. Changed their name from the Pacers. To the Sky, I believe it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure when they did it. They were Pacers when I was here. And Skyhawks, I, I believe they did it last year. Wilson driving back, getting rushed. Colin Horace giving chase as is Robertson, and he throws it away. So Pete Hurd with a nice grab over there. <laughs> Former baseball player for Mississippi College with the scoop. Showing you the hands that made him a gold glover at third. Oh, come on, gold glover? Well, maybe not. All right, yeah. Stretching it for the old coach. Carlton Cisco on to kick. Had a 43-yarder his last time. Deep is Jerome Russell. He'll put his heels at the 37. Lester making sure Cisco was set. This time a short, lazy kick that bounds at the 43 and is stopped at about the 39-yard line. So it's about a 30 one yard kick for Cisco. And the dogs will come back on offense. Cisco's punt covers 31 yards and is down at the Bulldogs. And we need to get it going right here. If Sanford can put seven more on the board, it's going to be real hard for UT Martin to come back with the offense that they've had this year, only scoring just under 10 points a game. This could be good. Coming at half a halftime, Colin Hunter will visit with uh, Janet Cohn, first year basketball coach here at Sanford. They don't even play yet. They'll play next year, but she got her first signee, Jennifer Luttrell from the Orlando area. So she is history in the making for the dogs. Griffith in motion, first and 10. Yancey throws it out there to him. He's got room. Dancing, darting to the 48 yard line. Yancey's pass complete the number Before he was run out of bounds over there by Ramondia Wee. Play is good for nine yards. And that's close to first down. And Sanford really likes that play, just swinging it out in the flat and let the wide receiver block for the for whoever catches it, whether it be a receiver or a running back, and that's a nice play, gaining nine yards. Second and two, or a yard and a half from the 48. Yancey now throwing the ball all over. It's almost like he's calling the plays. He's throwing 18 times. There's Whaley with a quick opener inside, and he'll get the first down to the 49-yard line. We have yet to see Sean Williams, the mule in there, He's been injured and re-injured himself a little bit this week. And it uh, looks like the Sanford fullback position in good hands with Keenan Ingram, the freshman, who played so well early in the year. And then they got the red shirt him because he didn't play too much. And then Jim Whaley and also Jamal Byrd. So the fullback position solid, although the mule will be graduating. And he's been a three-year starter for the dogs. Yancey drops back. Porter's wide open on the sidelines. He's got it. He's down the sidelines, but he stepped out of bounds, but not before he made the catch of 33 yards. Yancey to Porter, and that's catch number 100 for Mike Porter, who is getting close to being top five all time here in the red and blue. And I'm going to tell you, that's a Terry Beasley looking catch right there, looking back over his shoulder. And I, Bart is unconscious today. He is putting the ball in a great position again for the receivers to make catches, and they're doing it. That's a great catch right there. 32 yards, there's Howell getting warm for a possible field goal or Ladies extra point. He's got one of each today. And there's the announcement, his 100th catch for Mike Porter. Griffith on the delayed drop. Right there in his tracks. John Pugh shooting in from his tackle position, 6'1", 260 senior. James Griffith carries it right back over. Porter with a hundred boy, and what a tandem that's been. Yancey with a thousand attempts today, and Porter with a hundred catches. So a tenth of those were complete to number five. And that's good production. That's that is nice teamwork. 
Second and 11. Yancey, play action, dropping back. He's got Brown and just over his fingertips, and the flags are down. He was interfered over there. Grabbing him over there was Chris Jones, who had his hands draped on Michael Brown, and the Bulldogs will be the beneficiary of that. Yancey's Yancey back. making all the right reads Michael and decisions Brown. today, throwing it away when he has to, getting rid of the ball, and delivering it beautifully. No question. He is playing a great game. He has not really made a bad decision yet. Like you say, when he's about to get sacked, he's thrown it away twice that I can remember just off the top of my head. But every ball has been delivered in a catchable position, and most of them have been delivered right on the hands. Bart, 11 out of 19. There have been four or five drops. Mm -hmm. Out of that, 155 yards already. Porter with four catches for 67 yards. Yancey with 1,100 yards on the year. So he's gotten way over his per game average already. But he's thrown for 200 yards plenty of times in his career. But I don't think he's done it this year. So it'll be the first call. time this year if he does it. The penalty, is a penalty moves it to the three. And it'll be first and goal. Sanford will take the ball first and goal from the three yard line. On the defense. 15 yards, first down. First and goal. And here's the strange set. There's the interference there. Strange set by the Bulldogs, as you see on the bottom, with the, the diamond set. Four wide receivers. Yancey throws it the other way to Brown. And he doesn't have it. And I'm going to tell you, that one hit him in his hands. Boy, did he drop it or was it knocked away? It was hard to see. We'll see on the replay. Yancey just putting it exactly where he wants it. Brown had it in his hands again. Excuse me, Watson did. And uh, I don't know if it was knocked away or dropped it. So Yancey will get the play. Well, you like the setup with Watson. He comes out of the game now. 6-4. You like his chances against the 5-10 Jones. Second and goal from the three. Whaley inside. Touchdown. Jim Whaley's got his second co score of his brief career, the second of this game. We're going to have to start calling him Moose. He's looking like Moose Johnson. Uh, he has the uh, same sort of look about him, likes to block, and you see his helmet there. He's got paint all over. He's going to have to go to a paint shop. Look at Whaley. Ain't it good to see. Sticking in there. He sure did. He Knocking just... guys back. Yes, sir. That's nice to see. He didn't fall until he fell on the paint of the Sanford in the end zone about five yards deep. So Whaley with his second touchdown, and Mike Howell will try for extra point number two to make it 17 to nothing. It is down. It Block. is up. It is blocked. You better tackle them or they'll return it. Yancey trying to give chase. That is Rod Harris trying to go all the way. Howell is blocked, and he will score. So just like that, the extra point is blocked. There are flags down. Flags are down in the vicinity of where it could be offsides. We'll see. Well, you got to hope it is. They didn't stop the play, so hopefully that's defensive offsides. The linemen are walking back, so maybe it is. Whew. Mike Howell even got a little dirty on that one, and he showed pretty good speed for he a did. kicker. He was down there him. trying to chase Rod Harris down there. Oh, Offside oh Skyhawks, and again, another major mistake by the Skyhawks. They have been on their way to a touchdown and fumbled. Sanford drove it. They have a score there erased because of offsides, and it came from the side where the block occurred. And that's two gifts right there. They fumble for us, and then they go off sides after they blocked that PAT. So we have dodged two major bullets. The first field goal set up by Bulldogs stopping a fourth down play. So Howell will try again, I would presume. The penalty moves the ball half the distance. He'll, the, the football will be moved forward we'll from the, the three now to the one and a half, but Howell's still out there, so they will just knock it through and get on out of here. Get on out of here. They need to kick this thing through. Howell, good look at the junior from Pelham. Yancey will put it down. He puts it up. It is good. 17 to nothing. Bulldogs on top of the Skyhawks here with a minute 13 to go in the first half. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back with more from Cybert Stadium. The Dogs on top by 17. Y-D-E-A-M 850 in Birmingham. Sanford's...
stab when you're not around. I'm stabbing. All right. The game airs again on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock. 60 yard six play drive in a minute 24. On Tuesday at 4 30. Check your game. Two touchdowns in the last four minutes, 22 seconds for the dogs. They both belong to Jim Whaley. That's good to see some offense. 10, 207 freshman out of Birmingham, yeah. I tell you, that's the kind of offense we need. And if we do that again here quickly, you know, you could get UT Martin down and just have a runaway game. There's a squib kick by Howell and uh, <laughs> nice tackle over there by Chad Brewer, the tight end, on his teammate. <laughs> and it's just not working. Lester got it. Brewer knocked him down. Yeah, that wasn't very good there. But they were just lucky to get the ball covered over there. <laughs> that was ugly. Oh. First and 10 from the 31. Pete Hurt enjoying this because I tell you what, the Bulldogs 4-1 and one at home, but they've all, one's been in overtime, a couple by a couple of points there, and they're sort of enjoying this cushion a bit, but it's, we've still got another half. Wilson will drop back. McCleary would like to get something on the board, but nothing happening there as Thatcher comes all the way through. Travis Thatcher. Sacked on the play by number 92. Travis Sophomore out of Thatcher. Snellville, Georgia, 6'2", 258. John Watkins has done a super job of that defensive line. He sure has. That's great pressure right there. Thatcher making the sack. And Sanford's front has to know that they're going to be 20. passing the ball. They're down 17 points, only averaging 10 points a game, so they're going to have to come out throwing. The front guys can just pin their ears back and go. John Watkins, a former Bulldog, but of the Mississippi State variety. Second and 20. 30 seconds to go. Wilson is throwing out the flats. There's Joyner. He'll try to run it over there. Turner again belting him out of bounds at the 25. The clock will stop Wilson's with 23 seconds to go. And that rascal's hitting today. That's sure another that nice shot. Number 39, Mark mm, that's good to see. Don't you think? Certainly is, and then would have had an all-star type season. Turner's that kind of player. The cornerback, but just hasn't been healthy this year. No, injuries will mess you up. And especially a shoulder. You just yeah. don't want to mix it up in there, but it's obviously feeling pretty good today. Third and 15, Coward in motion. Shotgun again for Wilson. There's that screen over the middle, back to Cowan. And he's drugged down there by Eric Payne. Payne will drag him down with some jersey. Richard Kohler calling timeout with 12 seconds to go. On the play by number six, Richard Kohler was jumping around like a third base coach waving a runner home. He wanted to make those guys punt. You never know what will happen. He was excited, wanted that timeout. Rusty Henry there, could see him back from injury, rushing the quarterback. Cowan and watch Payne with a one-hand grab. Good tackle. There's only so many times you can run those screens. Those are effective two or three times a game, but when you've run it two or three times and a half, they just stop being effective. Touchdown calls comes your way at 7 o'clock Wednesday night on W8. Fourth down. However. And is sponsored by Coca-Cola, Armstrong Relocation, Cross Blue Shield of Alabama, Bell South Mobility, and Powerade. That's Wednesday night at 7 on WH. Sanford out of timeouts. Fourth down. See if they come after this. Cisco in. Doesn't look like they're going to come after it. Low squib kick stops at the 44. And it'll roll to the 36 yard line and the clock will run out. So the Bulldogs with a 17 to nothing lead here at halftime at a gorgeous Cyber Stadium. Sanford on top, we got some halftime festivities coming up for you. We appreciate you watching Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. We'll come back with much more with the numbers and everything. Stay with us.
than three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sport. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham and Montgomery. The worries of being 65. My biggest worry? How cold the water's gonna be. Well, I guess this aphids on my roses. Are the bluegills biting? <laughs> At age 65, the least of your worries should be your health care coverage. Call this toll-free number and find out about the worry-free health care plan from Seniors First. Seniors First pays 100% of your hospitalization. There are no monthly plan premiums and no deductibles. You also receive annual physicals. You pay only $10 per doctor visit and you receive $100 toward eyeglasses and much more. Stop worrying about your health care coverage and start worrying about the more important things in life. Spending enough time with my grandchildren. Seniors First, the worry-free Medicare plan. Call 1-800-310-1919 to sign up now. That's 1-800-310-1919. Welcome back to halftime at Sanford UT Martin with the score of 17 to nothing. We're joined at halftime by Janet Cone, the newest member of the Sanford coaching staff. She is our new women's basketball coach. Coach, first of all, I'd just like to ask you, coming to Sanford as a new coach, I'd just like to hear a little bit about your background in basketball. Okay, sure. Um, I have been down in Florida coaching at St. Leo College, which is a member of the Sunshine State Conference, which is a really great Division II conference. I um, had a real privilege down there working with Ted Owens. Who, um, anyone who knows anything about basketball knows Ted coached for 19 years at the University of Kansas, the National Coach of the Year. So um, we were down there building a women's program for St. Leo College. Well, that's great. I'm sure that experience in building a program at St. Leo's will help you here at Sanford. Right, you know, and that's one of the things I'm looking forward here. You know, not many college coaches get the really honor and privilege of starting a program from scratch like we are here. So that's really exciting for me as a coach. And, you know, really, it's one of the things that a lot of quality players are looking for. You know, they're coming here to play Division One basketball and doing something that's never been done before. Exactly. And I know most people know that the signing week is right now. I understand that you have already signed your first recruit at Sanford. Yeah, we signed our first ever women's basketball player um, on Wednesday, and um, now that she's signed, I can actually talk about her. It's been in the paper. Jennifer Luttrell, who um, two-time All-State player, um, Central Florida leading scorer, USA Honorable Mention, All-American, scored over 2,000 points, and that's going into her senior year, so she's still going to score some more. Um, not only an outstanding athlete, but also outstanding student. And that's certainly what we're looking for here at Sanford, that student athlete is going to be real important for us to build a really successful program. Now, coming from Florida, your recruiting plans, what are they? Are they to concentrate on the state of Alabama or really just look for the best candidates in the southeast? Well, you know, we're looking for the best candidates in the southeast. And obviously, there are a lot of great players, not, you know, just right here in Birmingham. Um, there's a lot of players in this area that we're looking at and also in the state of Alabama. You know, um, I've been in coaching 17 years, and a lot, of co a lot of my college coaching has been done in North Carolina, South Carolina. So, you know, we're going to really focus on North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Well, that's enough to focus on, I'm sure. Uh, as far as your philosophy when you are out recruiting, I know most folks are familiar with Coach Brady's success in the men's program. Is that something you sell? or will push when you are recruiting athletes? Well, yeah, you know, what Coach Brady's done here is really people know um, about our men's basketball program here, and they know that, you know, um, Sanford is really picked to win the conference, I think, this year. And, you know, people who know basketball know men's and women's basketball. So, you know, we've heard a lot about what Coach Brady's done, how students are really behind this program, and the gym is packed when they play, and I think that's going to carry over to our program also. I think so. The bands make a little noise. Sorry about that. Um, you mentioned before we came on air that with the Olympics and things that have gone on with women's basketball, it's really in the forefront. Is that does that make your job a little bit easier? Oh, yes. You know, right now, you know, the Olympic dream team, the real dream team was the women's team. You know, they won the gold medal. They A lot of those women took a year off to really train and compete. And, 
you know, being right there in Atlanta, this area saw a lot of women's basketball. And, you know, the other thing we're real fortunate about, Atlanta Glory is in the new professional women's team in Atlanta. So, you know, we now have role models for our young girls to look up to. You know, Rebecca Lobo is a household name. And that's helping us in our recruiting efforts because women now want to play basketball and they want to go on and compete at the Division I level. And the final question, I know your first year will be the season of 1997-1998. I know you've had to look forward to that. Tell us a little bit about your schedule. Well, you know, our schedule is complete for next year. We'll play 16 conference games. You know, we are in the Trans-American Athletic Conference, which is a very competitive Division I conference for women. But we're also going to open up our first ever game. We'll be at the Liberty University Tournament. Um, Liberty will be in that tournament, Moorhead State and um, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. We also have Nickel State, um, University of New Orleans, UT Martin will be on our schedule, um, Wofford, just to name a few. So we feel like we have a good um, conference, or a good schedule for our first year conference play. Well, that is outstanding. I thank you for taking time to speak with us at halftime. And again, we'd like to thank Janet Cohn for taking time to speak with us at halftime of the UT Martin Sanford football game. And again, the halftime score, 17 nothing. We'll be right back with halftime stats right after this on the Alabama Cable Network. three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sport. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham, and Montgomery. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, cold. You frozen yet? Just the surface, you. And I'm a little soft in the middle. We're cracking up back here, Bob. I'm frozen first. I'm frozen down. It's right again. Anything but Coca-Cola and we melt. I love it. Give me that Coca-Cola. Hey, you fool out. Hey, nice feeling, fan. That's Coca-Cola. Woo, that's Coca-Cola. for a while. Oh, delicious. The most exciting event in the history of Alabama high school sports is coming to Legion Field December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the best in classes 1 through 6A. Compete for a state championship in the inaugural Super 6 Championship. Tickets to this historic event can be purchased by calling 1-800-553-2947. Presented by Alabama Power, Mountain Dew, Fort First Baptist Health Person, and Thompson Tracker Company. The Super 6 Championship. Be a part of history. These people are smiling because they're members of First Educators Credit Union. Since 1935, First Educators has made a financial difference for Alabama educators. As satisfied members, they're paying less for auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards, even earning interest on checking. And when it comes to savings, First Educators offers higher dividends. If your financial institution isn't giving you a reason to smile, call First Educators. Member accounts insured by NC Back at halftime, 17 to nothing. Dogs, the most important stat, but some of the other numbers, as you look and see, Bart Yancey warming up. First downs, the dogs are dominating that. Martin has run the ball fairly effectively, only averaging 60, but with 38. But Sanford with 155 yards throwing of Bart Yancey. One turnover costly to Martin as they fumbled inside the five. Penalty's not a problem. Sack's not a big deal. And Sanford with 203 total offensive yards to 149. Both teams only averaging 150, so well ahead of their paces there. So that is some of the halftime numbers. And again, 17 to nothing. The big number among the leaders, James Griffith, leading rusher for the Dogs, 11 carries for 33 yards, but Jim Whaley with two touchdowns. And Bart Yancey really throwing the ball well for 155 yards. We'll be back with more at the second half kickoff here on the Alabama Cable Network. The Dogs on top of the Skyhawks, 17 zip.
than three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sport. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham and Montgomery. The worries of being 65. My biggest worry? How cold the water's gonna be. Well, I guess this ape it's on my roses. Are the bluegills biting? <laughs> At age 65, the least of your worries should be your health care coverage. Call this toll-free number and find out about the worry-free health care plan from Seniors First. Seniors First pays 100% of your hospitalization. There are no monthly plan premiums and no deductibles. You also receive annual physicals. You pay only $10 per doctor visit, and you receive $100 toward eyeglasses and much more. Stop worrying about your health care coverage and start worrying about the more important things in life. Spending enough time with my grandchildren. Seniors First, the worry-free Medicare plan. Call 1-800-310-1919 to sign up now. That's 1-800-310-1919. Dog scoring with Howell on a 24-yard field goal in the first quarter. Second quarter, Jim waited with a one-yard touchdown run. A couple of minutes later, actually four minutes later, another touchdown run for Jim Whaley to make it 17 to nothing. And now the dogs will get the second-half kick here as well. We're glad you're watching the Alabama Cable Network. Scott Griffin, along with the former dog, Colin Hunto, and Dr. Digit Ashley Stevenson doing the numbers for us, as always. The kick by J.J. Brown, his first appearance of the game, goes deep. Looks like Joe Acklin has it at the five, brings it across the 25 to the 26. We'll give him a 21-yard return, 18-yard return. To the 26-yard line, Joe Acklin, his first return of the year. The same starters, Yancey, Whaley, Griffith, Brown, and Watson, and Knox Porter will start in the three wide receiver set. Yancey trotting on the field. And Travis, West, Jernigan, Dean, Burgess, the, the only senior on that squad, Dean. That's good, that's good news for Carroll Cray, the offensive line coach, and Pete Hurt. Those guys should get bigger and better with an offseason of work, but looking for winning season number two in a row right here with a young football team, only nine seniors. Yancey in the flat, it's to Brown. He's trying to tightrope, and he steps out of bounds. In fact, he had slowed up and really had not stepped out of bounds. I think you'll see on the replay, he thought he had stepped out. He could have gone on down the sidelines. Watch this. It does look that way, either that or he knows his momentum is pulling him out and he can't stop. So he gets yeah. up right there and he yeah. had not stepped out of bounds. So he gets to the 43-yard line. Or Brown could have run a little bit further. Lala, Starp, Reynolds, and Strobridge, and Swift, the good one at middle linebacker. They've kept him neutralized somewhat here have the Bulldogs first and 10. Hard to run away from a middle linebacker though, that's why he's playing there. Russell on the delay, he's outside. Pass Swift into the secondary and he's got 13 over that left side. The scat back, the gnat they call him, you see him there, built like a fire hydrant. The freshman out of Woodlawn. And I, you look at this, the first two plays called, Jerome makes a nice run there. But Pete Hurt knows if he can come out and score quick here with UT Martin, with the record they have and the poor season that they've had, he knows if he can get a quick score here, he's going to put them down for the count. Ramondi Williams has played a very strong game. John Schumacher, Jones, Harris, Johnson, and Beard. Williams has been all over the field. First and 10 dogs for the 41. Porter to the right, Brown up top, I formation. Here comes Brown in motion. Pitch back, Russell. Looked like he might want to throw. Delays still get outside and will get four or five. Good run by Russell. He hesitated, then got outside. Swift coming down. The Ted Hendricks looking like is Swift with all the bandages and pads hanging off of him. But watch him come in with a right hand karate chop trying to strip him the ball, but Russell had nothing to do with it. He does look like Hendricks. That is, you're right. He does try to strip from behind. Most people do that once they get a hand on it. But Jerome, again, playing better than his year would show. I mean, he's a, a freshman playing like a, an upperclassman holding on the ball there after a big swat. Russell was a defensive back two weeks before the season began. 
ends up being the leading rusher so far this year with 521 yards. Yancey, the pitch back to Watson, makes one man miss. He's got room. He'll get close to the first down. Good run there by Michael Watson as the Skyhawks missing some tackles. Flags are down, however. Well, that's the thing you like to see. He is a great athlete. And again, if he can just get the, those misses out of his system, catch the ball, and then do things like that with it, he is going to be an outstanding receiver and probably rewrite a lot of records in the Sanford record book. Tommy Walker bringing us some gorgeous baseball hats here with Sanford. We're going to tell you something about him in just a moment. Pitch back to Watson. You see there, one missed tackle. And some linemen trying to get out of the way there, but the penalty against Sanford. The football will come back to the block in the back. Offense. Ten yards. Repeat second down. If you'd like to give to the building of the new Sanford baseball stadium, they're going to put some chair back seats and break it up nicely. As always, the gorgeous Sanford the campus. The ball back to the you can do that. Call the, the athletic department for more information. For course, Sanford baseball stadium fun. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it as we go along. Second and 20, Yancey the shotgun. Dropping back, gets hit, tries to find his man over there, and that is Russell, and it goes through his hands. A little low throw, and maybe the first errant throw by Yancey, but it really wasn't that bad either. No, man, he had pressure coming in his face. He had to be able to see that out of the corner of his eye. He did show, again, a lot of senior maturity just to stand in there and throw the ball. But again, that one was off, but not by a great margin. The Sanford Baseball Fund, $200 to get you a chair back seat and put your name on the back of it. That's not bad to be forever implanted, plus season tickets, obviously. So call the Sanford Athletic Department, 870-2966, to give to the Sanford Baseball Fund building the stadium. Third and 20. Yancey going deep. He's got Falanga there, and Falanga looked around for some reason at the coverage with the ball in flight, and, and I think that affected his running, and he didn't make the catch. He didn't make the cut or the catch. He didn't plant it round it off. Yeah, it? he didn't get out hard enough. He did round it instead of planting and cutting out. And he just wasn't close enough to the sideline to make the catch. You saw him look back there for some reason and then sort of took his momentum away from running like a baseball player looking at the catcher instead of just heading for the base. Fourth and 20. Rackley on for the kick. It's high. And it bounds at the 24. And Bishop will down it at the 23-yard line. So a 26-yard kick. 26 yards for Rackley. By number 17, Fred Bishop at the 23. 17 to nothing. Here are the starters for the Skyhawks. Wilson Lester Joyner is the running back, and he's had a pretty good first half. Reeder has had some nice gains. 17-yard average with catches. Although the halftime stats we have says 10 yards, he has 46. Because one of them went for 25 in the middle of the field. That was a phantom catch. That was just a figment of your imagination. Oh, it was? Okay, first it did. Wilson drops back. He's got a man in the flats. It's uh, Cowan, and he's dropped immediately. Carney, aggressive over there. His fifth tackle of the day, Corey Wilson Carney, the sophomore who was suspended a few weeks ago, but has come back nicely for breaking team rules. Swearingen, Lawrence, Woody, Slaughter, Coor is a tackle. And you got a couple of cornerbacks hitting today. Turner and Carney are passing some paint. Wait, what do you say? Trading, Trading paint. paint. With the it. boys across the line. Second and eight from the 24. Three wide receivers set for the Hawks. Pump fake, throws it out. And there's Cowan towing the line to get two yards. Sort of a strange play there. And Cowan's going, well, I thought I was further downfield on that one. <laughs> that didn't do a lot of good there. He actually got a yard. Taylor, Landell, Horace, Robertson have played super for the dogs this year. And Eric Payne has been right there with them. There's Mike Dell, the senior captain. And the top there with Wilder, Carney, Turner, Stamps, and Morris. It's been a good stellar defensive year, giving up 19 points a game. But really, throw out a, the division one game against Central Florida. They're down around a couple of touchdowns. Third and seven. Wilson over the middle, nice arm, and there's Stamps knocking it away. The Skyhawks want the flag, and he may have had that left arm draped on the back of Reeder, 
But uh, they'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Stamps with a good play nonetheless. Let's see. I think that is tight. The, the arm is there. Whether he made contact before the ball got there or not, I can't tell. Fortunately, in college, you don't have that deep back judge, so there's no one right in the middle of the field to make the call. He grabs Reeder, and Reeder's still questioning that call, and Stamps may have gotten away with one there. Fourth and seven. Cisco thinking about... He's going to fake it. He's going forever. The Bulldogs still haven't found him, and he's knocked down at the 48. <coughs> nice play by Cisco. Pete Hurt is Cisco very, King very upset. No one rushed the punter. Not one soul. Usually you send somebody to rush the punter. There's Pete Hurt, who is livid on the sidelines. Watch this. Sanford drops back, and Cisco, I think he's still going to kick it here. Then he goes, well... Hey, I might as well run it. Lights are on, no one's home. That's right. There's got to be one guy that ensures that the punt goes off. Somebody screwed up right there, and I don't see Pete Hurt grab anybody. Maybe they're still on the field playing defense. First and ten. Big play for the Hawks with Cisco's awareness. There's Joyner in the secondary. He's rumbled out of bounds by Jeff Morris, but he'll have about 17 over there, and Wilson jumping around. The Skyhawks getting a little life here in the second half. Boy, you hate to see that spirit come back into them. They have to be put down easily with the record they have. They hadn't had a lot of success this year, but right there they get a nice fake punt. First play from scrimmage after the fake, they get a first down. Sanford needs to squash this right now. And that's a great run. First and 10 from the 31. Wilson looking around. There's that quick out again. It's been effective. Cowan toeing the line. And again, that little play that got a yard a minute ago gets 11 over there. So they're moving the football now within three plays inside the dogs 20. I think those Sanford is first down figured out what's happened yet. No, they don't. That, that was a shocker. That looked like the one that happened against Alabama earlier in the year. That punt guy was just running forever. First and 10. Skyhawks would like to put in the end zone, obviously, but their kicker, J.J. Brown, has not made a field goal all year. He's 0 for 96. Wilson dropping back. The screen set up again, and it's dropped by Joyner. He had some room to run over there. Taylor putting the pressure on to hit Wilson, but Joyner had it bounce off his forearm. <laughs> that was kind of rough. Yeah, Taylor planted that quarterback on his ear. That's a nice nice pressure by James. 17 to nothing. Sanford rolling right along to that fake punt, and all of a sudden the Hawks have some soaring heights they'd like to reach here. <laughs> Get back in this game. Good one. Second and 10. Wilson out of the shotgun. Four wide receiver set. Reader, Cowan, Harris. Wilson will look left. He's got Cowan over there again. The freshman to freshman. And there's a penalty flag down. They got nothing on that play. And uh, the face mask Wilson's will be on stamps, I believe. Yeah, it looks like it. And that, that's a shame because they did stop the pass in the flat for no gain. Sanford's going to give them probably five. I didn't see it, so it must be a... It did not look flagrant, no. but we'll see. Maybe we have a replay showing it. No personal foul, just a five yards. Five yards, yard face mask penalty. On just raked his face mask. You'll see Wilson was going to go right, but had to get rid of it on the pressure. We'll repeat, second down. And yep, there it is. Ackley coming up, just getting his, or Turner, I should say, getting his hand on the face mask. So they'll mark it off. Face mask against the defense, five yards. Repeat, second down. Well, we don't need to give them any help right here. We need to stop this thing and not let them score. 17 to nothing, 11-12 to go in the third quarter. Wilson gets a free play on the five yards, second and five. Drops back, looking left, that's Harris. And again, Harris open, but not getting past the chains. And the Skyhouse has not 15, done well on Lenny third Harris. and fourth and short, and this will Lenny be third and about a yard. They'll come out with a no huddle, though, to try to... Sh and, but still in the shotgun. Wilson gets it, rolling. And he'll throw it away. And uh, I'm not sure about that play by the coaching staff of the Skyhawks Wilson's because they have third and a yard, and they chose to go to uh, Terrence Smith. no huddle, but they looked a little disorganized over there. Now that's it's a fourth down. And that's the problem with the no huddle. While you do keep the same defense on the field, Sanford can't substitute. 
if UT Martin's not used to running a no huddle, well then they're just as disorganized as Sanford. And, and out of right. a shotgun on yeah. third and short. And plus you go for the advantage of the shotgun is getting a quarterback back quick. If you watch the snap that they're getting on the shotgun, it's like an alley-oop. That thing is not getting back there quick. So that cutting down some of the time. Gary that w. was not executed some properly. We'll see if it hurts them again. Fourth and two. Some lost and now the whistle blown and uh, the referee coming in to confer. And I don't know what this is about. There are no flags down. Fourth and two from the 11 yard line. And they're conferring with Cowan there. It's fourth down. It, it is fourth down because it was second down and 10, and they threw the short gainer. And Ackland, excuse me, Turner made the tackle, which made it still second and five. Then they threw the short gainer to Harris in the flat, third and one. Then threw that ball away. So it is indeed fourth down. Oh, it certainly is. And uh, we'll see what they're doing. There's timeout time on the down. field for That's the Pacers. Martin. We'll keep it That's here. Their first time out of the second half. As we try to rehash what this is all about, but it is indeed fourth down and about a yard. Well, they moved the ball towards Sanford's goal line a little bit. Maybe they had misspotted the ball. I, I thought they had misspotted it because it, it was very short, third and very short. Then they threw an incomplete pass, and they marked it back to the left. And so I thought, well, maybe they misspotted it on third down. But now they have moved closer. So it is about a yard as opposed to two. And there's the band going a little nuts. They're running around like crazy people. Last game of the year. Sanford Athletics would like Trying to, to stay warm, Marshall probably. Relocation. Probably. A little chilly out there. I got you a spare battery. As a successful moving company. Gorgeous day here, as you see, the beautiful, beautiful sky and the shrubbery and trees. What do you you will not find a prettier setting in college football than this one right here. No question. What do you think we got coming here? Fast run. Into the third quarter? Well, I don't know. I mean, We're left. I was surprised on the third down call. Yeah. And now we have fourth down. They have not had success running on this play, and they're in the shotgun now. But they've had success with a short passing game. Yep. Looks like what uh, Coach McCleary will call for. Here comes the blitz. Wilson running Great out. He's tripped up. Bernard Wagu got a shoestring in there and dropped Wilson. So the Skyhawks are turned away after making the big play on the punt. Five, they're turned away again. And that's a great defensive call. Sanford guessed and guessed right. They guessed that they'd be passing the football, and they were. They brought two people off the outside, a linebacker and a cornerback, and that's a great play. Jordan was there for the blitz, but he couldn't pick up both. So yep. one of them was going to get it. That's right. They brought too many to block. Second sack of the day for the Dogs. And they get possession. That's a big time play. So I guess that sort of is the season for Tennessee Martin right there in a nutshell. I haven't seen privy of the games, but uh, moving the ball. Second and 10, excuse me, first and 10. Brown on the outside. He'll get about six over there. The little screen to Michael Brown. He's got his fourth catch, fifth catch of the day now. Yankees pass complete to number for 12. about 43 yards. Michael Brown. Play is good for six yards, correction. And that's good to see Sanford's passing yards, offense getting on track. Again, Bart had a great first half. He started the, the second 61 yards. Half. That's I'm great. sorry. That's quite all right. 60, 62 yards, Dr. Digit says. I had misadded something. Didn't throw an 18-yard catch in there. So 62 yards for Brown, who, again, is Porter is playing his first game in three, and Brown probably has, I'm guessing, 13, 14 catches in the last three games sitting in for Porter. Quick pitch. Griffith up top. Not getting much up there. Nice play on the block up there. That is uh, Mario Carlock, the 6,200-pound sophomore, who was getting blocked and still made the play. They've had tough trouble trying to get the corner on that quick pitch. It's not a true tall sweep. It's just, it is a, a quick pitch. Bart doesn't reverse that to pitch the ball. They hadn't gotten the corner yet, and that's, that's surprising with the, the rush defense that UT Martin puts on the field. Third and four. From the 27-yard line, 17 to nothing, Sanford, 9.46 to go third quarter. Yancey's got a man as Porter. He's got the first down. Catch 101 for the Mighty Might from Niceville, Florida. Michael Porter Yancey's at the 39-yard line. Mike and again, Porter. senior to senior, they've been doing this for four years, folks. And again, you see Bart here deliver a nice tight spiral. 
on a curl route. Great and coverage. Great coverage. But what are you going to do? You run the man off. You turn around quick. He can't do everything. If he's on that thing tight, then you're going to beat him deep. 17 to nothing. First and 10. Porter up top, Brown in motion. Coming back where he came from. Griffith, right side, ducking through, and he's dropped. Number Trying to run over there by Dean and uh, Burgess and Judd Jernigan. And he may grab a half Tackle yard. That's about it. 86, John Tackle Smith. by John and Swift. 77, Jamie Reynoldson. And Reynoldson there, 77. Brings up second and nine for good the player on the front for the Skyhawk. Yeah, they've been doing a pretty good job up front, clogging it up in the middle. So Sanford does need to get, get on the outside and run the football. Some of the colors from Shades Mountain. Second and nine. Yancey getting pressured, looking for somebody, gets it loose and throws it away. Good play by Yancey. He was getting blitzed over there by Carlock, and they brought to everybody that time. Sawyer also in there, and Yancey Yancey did a nice job getting away. Look, he's under severe pressure and dumps it off where it's not nobody around. Again, another nice play by Bart, just getting rid of the ball, but you're right. He is under pressure from the snap. They timed a linebacker blitz, and that thing worked extremely well. Inside linebacker runs free right up the middle and puts pressure on Bart immediately. Five out of nine and third downs are the dogs. Some of the Sanford students here enjoying the contest. The dogs winning 17 nothing. A win gives them a six and four mark and ensures them a winning season. Yancey going deep, Porter's there, he's got it. He's down at the nine yard line. Beautiful. Michael Porter on the long catch. He's having another super day. The senior, good to see him coming back from injury. And his bird just, it's like hugging a, uh, <laughs> a bear, a doll. <laughs> Yancey going back and this is perfect. Yeah, I told you Porter was behind a guy earlier when they threw the, the ball short to Watson. He hasn't beat deep by a step or two. Bart, again, unconscious, drops the ball in the bucket. A beautiful pass and allows him to, to keep running downfield. What a great pass and catch. 51 yard play go, guys. by Yancey. We're going to look at the last time Yancey had over 200 yards. He has it now, first and goal. Yancey, Whaley inside, he'll get two. He's dumped there, Swift really kept roping him down after a two yard game. Porter now, six catches. 131 yards, and Mike's had some big games, but I'm not so sure that's not his career high in yardage on six catches. Play gains two yards, brings up second and goal from the six-yard line. We're looking up the last time Yancey. He's always consistent, 150, 160, 70 yards, but hasn't gone over two. And we'll tell you about it in a moment. Yancey, timing batter, it. Porter, touchdown! Yancey to Michael Porter, and Bart Yancey ties the school record for career touchdowns with number 34, and Porter getting the score, his second touchdown of the year. And that's how a fade pattern ought to be run. He got him, got the defender moving straight downfield, and then he breaks it out hard. Gives Bart a nice target to throw to. The last time Yancey threw over 200 yards, game six last year against Jack State with 212 yards. So the senior having a super day, the best of his senior season, which he has seen behind a young offensive line. Michael Owl is on, kicks it right through the middle, and the dogs are on top, 24 to nothing. There he is, the record holder, and now ties the touchdown record. He's been a good one here. At Sanford, we'll take a break. We'll come back. The dogs are on top of the Skyhawks, 24 to nothing. You're watching Bulldogs football on the Alabama Cable Network. And rallies his home of the... Frozen yet? Just the surface, you. And a little soft in the middle. We're cracking up back here, Bob. I'm frozen first. I'm frozen first. Yeah, right. again. Anything but Coca-Cola and we melt. I love it. Give me that Coca-Cola. you fool out. Hey, nice feeling, fan. That Coca-Cola. Woo, <laughs> that For a while. Oh, delicious. Lenny Harris. 
Porter with his seventh career touchdown catch. He had none his first two years, five last year, and only his second this year as he's missed a couple of three games. High kick by Howell at the 21. Harris has it there. Boy, you can hear the pads popping. Oh, Alvin Garrett drops down Harris right there. Look at Garrett. He is pumped up over there. Number 45. He's one of those, look at the Sanford sideline jumping around. And it was a fumble. No wonder. Garrett, I think, picked up the fumble. I didn't even see it. That's why he's excited. And the Bulldogs have it. I didn't even see the ball I come loose. And I'm going to tell you, you had two central guys making great plays. Alvin's excited about that. But Mark Quince Wilder comes down and just rips somebody. I'm telling you, he drilled a guy. You see it right there on the bottom of the screen. There's the fumble there's the there. Ball. All right. I couldn't see who got on it. Maybe Whaley there, number 49. I'm not sure. But uh, Garrett caused the fumble. And the Dogs have it at the 24. Yancey 16 out of 28 for 244 yards. Griffith on the pitch. Try on the left side. Look at the patience by Griffith. He'll get one or two, which could have been nothing over there. And Jamal Bird and Russell will check in for the dogs on this play. So Garrett really providing Griffith on the carry for the Bulldogs. a big play there. He's a freshman. Sanford signing three of those guys off the state championship team of Central. Last year they all they're all played this year and uh, they're all very good. I tell you it's going to be a lot of fun to see those guys develop. They're playing like this as true freshmen. Goodness knows what they'll be like when they're seniors. They're going to be something else. Second and nine. And Sanford obviously looking at a few more down there this year. I think I would be too. Jamal Bird's in the secondary, getting up close to the first down to about the 16 yard line and the Sanford uh, sideline is rocking and rolling over there. They ought to be. This is if we put this in the end zone right now, this is going to give us a luxury we have not had all year and that's having a game out of reach. You know, it's still a lot of time left of, over a full quarter left to play and that I can't describe the fun you have on the sideline as a starter when you actually get to come out and watch the second third team play. That's a lot of fun. That's when you enjoy football. Third and two. Yancey, Jerome Russell trying to pound it in there, still down. He's to the 17, Number one, but he'll be Russell two yards shy. And I don't think Pete will fool around. He'll send in Mike Howell and try to get this field goal. He's thinking. Boy, he's well, thinking. Here we go. The team wants to go for it. They're very upset. You can hear him screaming about it. But Peter wants to get some more confidence for Mike Howell, the junior, who has had his ups and downs. He has, and I think that's that's probably the safe play. They got all those guys yelling for him to go for it. They, they don't have to put beans on the table by coaching football. Right. So they're not going to make the call. Mike, five out of eight this year, 20 for 29 yards, six out of 12 on the year. This is from 34. It is up, and it is no good. He pushes it to the right, so the Hawks will take over. Four wide receiver set. This time Wilson will nuzzle close to his center Woody. They hand off, and I believe that's Joyner inside, getting five tough yards. Well, that's good hard running, but that's just not going to get it done. They've got to, to move the ball quickly. They've got a lot of catching up to do. And again, for a team that just can't produce offensively, this is a tough row to hoe trying to catch up to a 24 point Jackson, lead. Number 41, Adam Joyner on the carry for UT Martin. Play games four yards. Second and five. Hurry up offense. Yancey. <laughs> excuse me, Wilson out there and Wagu knocks down Terrence Smith out of Fort Walton Beach, California. Another good shot. Register this one for a knock em back. Man, I'm gonna tell you, they are hitting today. That's nice to see. I love that. Third and two. There's Wagu, another senior who's playing his last game in the Navy and Red. For UT Martin.
Sanford bringing the blitz. Wilson going down. Nice play by Wilson as they get it out of bounds. Smith over there on the catch to the 48-yard line in front of uh, Joe Acklin and George Roby. And that was a good play because they had dead man in the secondary. They brought seven men on the rush, and he does a nice job delivering the ball out in the flat. That's a nice pickup, nice first down. Trying to figure up the total touchdowns for Yancey because he was very close in that department as well, besides now owning the record for passing touchdowns. Oh, yeah. Handoff up the middle, Fred Bishop crashing in. That's another one of those freshmen from Central Joining High School in Tuscaloosa. Making that play. He is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by number 17, Fred Bishop, and number 9, Darnell Steele. And so he has he has 42 touchdowns total in his career mm -hmm. and see if that beats uh, there's a nice catch over there by reader he'll only get a couple of yards before he's knocked down 35 is the most I see Brady Jones had 35 between 88 and 1990 but Shorty Trammell has 43 oh, here so Yancey is at 42 down and seven I believe I'm correct. So he's one away from that record. He's still got a game to play and still has another quarter to play here. Wilson's pass complete to number 15, Lenny Harris. Stopped Third and seven. Number 75, Pearly Harris. Oh, no, excuse me. It's fourth and five. Pearly Harris in on that tackle. Play games, two yards. Well, they have no choice but to go for it. And again, if they don't make it here, they're going to give Sanford the ball right around midfield. And again, the way Sanford's offense has been clicking, you got to think they're going to get down there and get a score. And this is the wheels are just falling off for UT Martin. Fourth and five. Wilson in the shotgun. Sanford bringing everybody. Drop football. He's knocked down. Wilson knocked down. Wagu is there. Rusty Henry was also in there. Pearly Harris, the entire front four <laughs> of the dogs and the Skyhawks. Wilson is stopped by number 58. Look like a one and eight team right now. Yeah. And, I, and they have had success, but it's just not clicking. And Play the dogs take five. over on their side of the field to the 47. The I'll tell you, it's going to be, it would be tough for UT Martin to stay in this game. The way Bart has been playing, he has not played this way line. all year. This is the best game I've seen him play. He is really on target with his passes and has done a great job. First and 10. Normally the backup would probably be in, but on his last day. And as hot as he is. Just let him play. Sanford, Yancey throwing to Brown, and oh. he almost made a circus catch over there. Perhaps jumped when he didn't have to, but Brown was there. Another perfect throw by Yancey, but Brown got upended as it hit his paws. And we'll see. Maybe he didn't have to jump, but a yeah, beautiful throw again. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'd keep letting Bart throw. As long as he was in the game, I'd let him pass. I might take him out if I score a touchdown here, but he is just too hot not to let him put the ball in the air. And you can see him. He's just he's a, not on edge, but antsy. He, he wants to play. This yep. is like backyard to him growing up. His dad, Freddie Ancy, a local coach here. They're undefeated in high school, and there you can tell the headiness that he displays. And it's really shown this game. Timeout on the field. We'll take a break. 24 to nothing. Sanford with two minutes to go here in the football game. The dogs on their way to a winning season. We'll be back with more from the Alabama Cable Network. The most exciting event in the history of Alabama high school sports is coming to Legion Field December 12th, 13th, and 14th as the best in classes 1 through 6A. Compete for a state championship in the inaugural Super 6 Championship. Tickets to this historic event can be purchased by calling 1-800-553-2947. Presented by Alabama Power, Mountain Dew, Sports First Baptist Health System, and Thompson Tracker Company. The Super 6 Championship. Be a part of history. These people are smiling Welcome back to the Stanford Athletics would like to gorgeous setting here in Cyber Stadium. 24 to nothing, second and ten. Yancey will go on the shotgun this time with twins to the right. Bordered by Whaley and Russell. Now Brown in motion. He'll drop back. He's got Russell in the flat. Jerome will be knocked out over there at the 47-yard line. One-yard gain. He was knocked out. 
by Mike Jordan, Jerome Russell, Jr. out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. By number 14, Mike Jordan. And Jerome makes a nifty move. He does what he should do. He has one man out there to make the tackle. He eludes him, but inside-out pursuit got him. Third and eight. That's that hat fit? No, oh, hat's a bit big. What about the second one? It fit. Oh, I'll have to get one there. Yeah, you're out of luck, pal. Yancey, 17 out of 30. 246 yards and a touchdown. Here comes the blitz. Yancey rolling away from it. has got a man. It's Whaley, but he probably won't get away and does not. Good defense there by the Skyhawks. Yancey got away and threw it to Whaley for the catch, but not enough for the first down to Stowbridge. Jim Makes the play. Now, Whaley might be a tough guy, but I don't think he's going to lose too many folks. He's got a helmet magnet somewhere on him, I think, but he's a tough guy and, you know, catches the ball, maybe he makes the first down. Fourth and five, Rackley on the kick. Clock running, a minute 16. Sanford will wait for the clock to get close now. Or will they take the delay again? Sort of strange. From the 43s, Yancey has not punted particularly well, but they'll back him up. Neither has Rackley. Yancey's not punting today. Excuse me, I, I just <laughs> want to keep Bart in the entire game. <laughs> I swear. Rackley, the backup quarterback. You better believe so yeah, I don't understand that either. I don't because know. He, he's only punting in his second game. He's averaging 30 yards. Does not kick very That's long it. at all. And Five yards. They're choosing to back him up Named to 48 out. to give him more room, but I think he has plenty of room. Yeah. We'll see. He could probably give it all he's got and not kick it in the end zone. That'll be a question for after the game. Minute four to go. And there's the short kick. Bounds at the 25 and will roll dead at the 16 yard line. So good kick by Rackley. 32 yards, I believe, on the kick. Without the penalty, would have been on the 11. Not much difference. Inside Five. the 20. There you go. Five yard difference. You never know. First and 10, Skyhawks. 24 to nothing, Sanford, with 52 seconds to go in the third. Three wide receiver set. Dropping back, Wilson down the field. He had Harris open, just overshot him. Harris was there. He got between the corner and the safety over there. Roby and Buchanan, but he just missed him, did Wilson. And Pearly Harris is bringing some nice heat up front. He comes right up the middle and is grabbing the quarterback as he lets go of the ball. So that's that's good defense right there by Pearlie Harris. Junior, out of Pleasant Grove. The Grove. 6'3", 253 pounder. Second and 10. Back up line, getting a lot of action today. Wilson, looking, he's got time. Going deep, Harris. Oh, my goodness. Roby cut in front to try to knock it away. But a beautiful throw by Wilson, and Harris is there. Unfortunately, got knocked down, or he would have run for six. He surely Wilson would. That's a complete. post pattern that 15, defender Harris. tries to make a play on the ball. Unfortunately, eludes his hands. And it's a nice play. You can see there the cut. He got separation he on the sure cut, did. didn't he? He sure did. He made the hard cut inside, but a, a really a bad pass. He brought it back outside, gave us a chance to make a play on the ball, but it just wasn't made. First and 10. 42-yard game. Pass out in the flats. Wilson in front of Roby again to Harris. Sanford Athletics pleased to be sponsored again this year by Bromberg, celebrating their 160th anniversary in Alabama. Diamonds, China, Rolex watches, other fine gifts available at Bromberg. You can find them in Mount Brook, Birmingham, the Galleria, Tuscaloosa, and all kind of places in Alabama. Second and five for the Skyhawks at the 37. Three wide receiver set, Wilson. Taking the three-step drop, that same play that was open, open again. This time he puts it on the money to Harris. Harris with his third straight catch before Buchanan belted him out of bounds. And the Skyhawks are inside the 15-yard line. And here comes the first team defensive line for the dog. Yeah, I think Pete Hurst saying enough is enough. I've Wilson seen all of that I want to see. And that's a nice pass. They had a two-deep zone. And he sticks the takeoff right in front of the two-deep safety. 
makes a nice game. That's the play that was open a moment ago. 223 yards passing for Wilson. Good. First and 10. Again, triple set. There's the hand to Joyner. He's knocked down by Alvin Garrett. He'll get a yard or two, but Garrett, the freshman, rodeoing Mr. Joyner. That's the end of the third quarter. The score, the Bulldogs on top 24 to nothing and in control as we head to the final stanza in the final home game here at Cyber City. We'll take a break. We'll come back with the final quarter. The Dogs on top of the Hawks by 24. of being 65. My biggest worry? How cold the water's gonna be. Well, I guess there's aphids on my roses. Are the bluegills biting? <laughs> At age 65, the least of your worries should be your health care coverage. Call this toll-free number and find out about the worry-free health care plan from Seniors First. Seniors First pays 100% of your hospitalization. There are no monthly plan premiums and no deductibles. You also receive annual physicals. You pay only $10 per doctor visit, and you receive $100 toward eyeglasses and much more. Stop worrying about your health care coverage and start worrying about the more important things in life. Spending enough time with my grandchildren. Seniors First, the worry-free Medicare plan. Call 1-800-310-1919 to sign up now. That's 1-800-310-1919. Picture needs no words. 24 to nothing. Sanford, hope somebody's all right in the truck There's there. There's a furball on the list down there. <laughs> Something right. happening in the truck there, and we hope they're all right. 24 to nothing. First play of the fourth quarter from the 14. Three wide receiver set has worked brilliantly. There's Robertson battering the ball down. Joe Michael, 6'4", like an uh, albatross in there with those arms and wingspan, knocking down the football. That's good to see somebody else's passes getting batted down. Bart's had a few this year. I think that's only the second or third I've seen our defensive front get, so that's nice to see. Hit. Robertson having an All-American type year. Seven and a half sacks on the year. Seven tackles for losses. He's been player of the week before. Third and nine. Wilson against pressure. Gets it to Joyner. And he's belted it down at the 11-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and they'll go for it. Third quarter stat. Sanford with 325 total offensive yards to 292. Martin was 69 running the football, 223 passing with 13 first downs. Sanford was 17 first downs, 76 running and 249 passing. Fourth down at about six from the 11. This is on the shadowy end of Cybert Stadium. Hey, back it up a little bit, this might be the last charge. If we can stop them here, this might just put them out. What do you think? Twins to the right, short side of the field. It's wide up top. Wilson doing the wraparound. It's not going anywhere, and there's a fumble. Trying a little wraparound there. They had been successful with the trips. James Taylor coming up with a fumble recovery. His second of the year. And there it is, falling on the turf, and Taylor, the sophomore, falling on it. Right there to get it, and he picks up where he left off two weeks ago with the outstanding defensive play. That's just the old version of the Statue of Liberty instead of the guy running back being behind the quarterback. Once he sets, they just pass him and then wrap around. 14 minutes to go, 24 to nothing. Bart Yancey coming on again. I think they may have tried to take him out. He's like, look, I'm, I'm going to play. It's <laughs> not last game. I'm playing good. Let me in there. First and 10 from the 17. Pitch back, Russell. Coming back through, Swift is there as the wall. Jerome will get three before he ran into the belly of number 86. Tennis today, 3,688 here for the final home game. 
Sanford looking to go five and one at home this year. The only loss, 10 to three to Nichols State, has turned out to be a good football team. Yeah, they're in the top 20 now, aren't they? Yeah, six and three on the year. Football up to 21. Judd Jarnick going to lean over it and snap back to the senior that's made 44 straight starts. Brown is in motion out of the eye. Yancey, Russell, this time Swift misses, and Russell would have had some yardage on the outside, but a shoestring tackle there by Corey Cobb, the backup cornerback. Russell will get a couple, and it'll be third and four. And that was looking ugly. Swift comes right up the middle. You see there, he just had a bad route to get to Jerome. I thought he was going to hit him in the mouth when he got the ball, but Jerome eludes him and does pick up a couple of yards. Russell from Woodlaw. Third and four. Yancey will go in the shotgun. Split receiver, split backs. They're all going out in the pattern. A little delay blitz there, and Russell has it go off his hands. He had the first down, but Jerome just couldn't corral it. Coming in on the blitz over there for the Yancey Skyhawks, putting pressure for, one, Jerome Russell. for Reggie Walker. Ball falls and that might be the first pass at Fort has thrown that's not been catchable. That was a bit out in front. For but we'll allow that with only 12 minutes left in the game. That's the first bad pass. Rackley's on to kick. The scrimmage line is 24. He kicks it. Sort of a dead ball at the 47 and bounces. And Rackley will get his benefit of it going to the 42 yard line. Rackley's fun. 35 yard kick. Whether your next move is for home or office, let Armstrong Relocation handle the job. Professional, safe, courteous service with a tremendous attention to detail. That's what sets Armstrong Relocation apart from others in the moving industry. Armstrong Relocation, a proud corporate partner of Sanford Athletics. I love Armstrong Relocation. They do a fine job. Have they moved you? No, but I've just heard a lot of good things about them. First and 10 from the 42. Flip out there to Reeder, who's had a nice game for the Skyhawks. He'll get seven or eight as they just try to move the football. And Sanford will play a little cushy defense and allow them to catch those, I would think. Nursing a 24-point lead. Spina in on the play. No doubt. They're going to lay back a little bit. Just tear them to execute down the field. They hadn't been able to do it all, all day today, so they'll just give them a chance to, to execute four- and five-yard gains down the field and see if they can do it. Wilson. Out of Martin, Tennessee, right there, local boy in Martin. Second and four. And it looks like he might have a nice career. He's not very big, but has a pretty good arm, pretty good sense for the game. That one's knocked away by Spina. Second and five, excuse me, Wilson's it'll be third and about five. Number 88, Reader. And this is what Ball you like to see. Martin just cannot convert. Bring up third down and four. On third and down, it's third and five, and they're only doing it at about the rate of 20, 27%. So far this year, so you got to feel good which way is it about Sanford stopping them here and getting the ball back. Third and four from the 48. Three wide receiver set. Wilson now going deep. Spina looking around and knocks it away. But they'll oh. call pass interference. No, that's more. Is that Spino more? I think Spino was over there on the corner, and he's a little bit banged up now. Flag went down, and there's the coverage. Spina never turned around and then grabbed Reeder right there, so it was a good call. Reeder had no chance to make the catch. And that'll get it every time if you lay a hand on the receiver. Reader. Not looking back at the ball, they're going to call it, and that was a good call. It didn't look like it during the play, but on the replay you can see it certainly was pass interference. Do you agree? There's no question. That's interference on the defense. Exactly what it was. 15 no yards. First down. Reader, you see the size on him. He looks even larger than the 6'2 they list him at. Yeah, he's Watson type. First and 10 at the 37. Sanford looked like they're bringing a safety up top, but he'll bounce back. It does Wilder, I should say. Wilson over the middle. Nice play. Morris is there to make the tackle, but Smith on the catch. And he'll get the first down to the 24. 
Nice arm display by Wilson. No doubt. They're just running three-step drops. They're running slants and outs and being quite successful. Again, Sanford laying off a little bit on defense. Play games 13. I guarantee if he hurts, told him not to get beat deep. Yeah, and but you don't want to give up a score when you got a shutout goal. No, you don't. Flip out there to Joyner and uh, just a little bit too far in front. And a little too lazy for Joyner's liking either because he heard the footsteps of number 45, <laughs> Mr. Garrett. That would have been a locomotive hit over there. Yeah, he'd have had to go to the orthodontist after that one. He'd have knocked a few teeth loose. Harris checks out. Wagyu Spina Carney on the pass package, the dime package, it looks like. Certainly the nickel with five defensive backs in there. Looks like they'll rush three. Second and ten. Now they'll bring the blitz. Wilson over the middle. Wide open was two Skyhawks. But Dale came in to hit Wilson. And that's the gamble. The blitz can either uh, help you or hurt you. It helped the dogs that time. Low snap didn't help the Skyhawks. And you'll see two Reeder and Coward there in the vicinity behind their men. But Wilson had to throw it a bit earlier than he wanted. And we've seen a little freshman itis with Watson the past couple of games. You see a freshman right there not taking the heat and delivering the ball on target. That blitz was a well-timed blitz. 11.41 to go, third and 10. Wilson rolling, pressure again. Throws it over the middle, Cowan's there. And they'll give him the catch at the nine yard line. Good. Play there by Cowan. You see him is just a thin looking kid. He looks like he's still in high school, but <laughs> he does. He's got almost 40 catches on the year. Again, good heat on the quarterback. And an outstanding catch by the receiver. That, he did deliver the ball there where it was catching. Nick Spina providing a little bit too much cushion there, perhaps. And he maybe thought it was the zone. Wilson throwing deep to Reader and it's knocked away. That's a great play by Turner because he's covering. Smith in front of him. Morris has Reader, but then Turner with his eyes on the quarterback will go back to help. Watch. No doubt. That's a post corner. That's tough to defend. The underneath coverage on the short man comes back, makes a nice play, and that's, that's a great play. Eric Turner, the senior out of West End. He's having a heck of a game. Seems today. like the seniors have all played stellar today. Well, there's a little more motivation. The last home game, seniors know that they're down to two games left to play, and that's a great defensive play. 24 to nothing. Dogs. 11-18 to go. Second and goal. Shotgun for Wilson. Here comes the blitz. Wilson's got to throw it early, and there's a flag. Yep. And again, that one was an errant throw, and Ackland interfered really for no reason. Grabbed Reader and spun him around because really? that throw was not going to be on target. Well, again, he's looking at the man. He knows he's beat, and he sees the ball coming. Yep. I mean, what are you going to do? That's, you're beat. You'd rather have the penalty and let your defense play as opposed to giving up the six. I'd like to see Joe Acklin move to corner next year. I, I don't know why, but I think he's got good speed and strikes over there. And on the defense, the ball well will be safety. placed on the two-yard line. First down. Automatic first down to the three. But with Turner leaving... Of course, you got George Roby that wants to say something about that. Corey Carney coming back. So I guess it's a luxury Michael tool will have. Nice healthy competition. First and three from the three. Reader in motion. Option. Wilson coming. Nothing there. He'll get a yard. Wilder and those guys were stringing it out, but Garrett and his wild self just came up forcing the action and <laughs> made a nice play. He's a little loony out there. And that's, that's what you like. You like to see a... Linebacker whose eyes aren't quite focused straight ahead. They're rotating in counterclockwise motion and just playing football. He's a he's a wild man out there. Tasmanian devil is Alvin Garrett. No gain on the play. It'll be second and goal from the two. That's got to be tough calling plays down here. They don't. UT Martin doesn't run the ball very well. Can't pass it down here. Not enough room. So what do you call? There you got loaded up on the short side of the field. Now Cowan will go up top. Here comes the blitz. They'll throw the timing pattern. It is there, and they'll give it to him. He got that foot down. It looked like maybe the foot was very close, but they'll give it to Harris on the score over Corey Carney. And we'll see the replay. Good pass by Wilson, almost a little too high. Yeah, I thought he got but too Harris, much air. Harris went out and got it. He sure did. I thought he had too much air. It looked like it was going out of the back of the end zone. Well, it's hard to see, see there. But you can see 
Well, it looked like his left foot was yeah. in if his right foot was not on the outside paint. So the touchdown nonetheless, and now Mark Quince Wilder injured and trying to get off the field. Chris Gillespie checking him out over there by the pylon. He looks like he's in La La Land walking off the field on the goal line. Twenty four to six they'll go for two. Fifty eight yard drive at nine plays two minutes six seconds. Boy you hate to give up the shutout there. There's Mark Wentz Wilder. Wayne Kendrick and Gillespie taking a look at him on the rollout. Wilson nowhere near the vicinity for Harris. Rattle the fence with that one and it's twenty four to six with ten twenty one to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a break. Come back with more from Cyber Stadium. The Bulldogs on top by 18. For more than three decades, two men have been joined in one of the most intriguing competitions in sports. A competition made all the more riveting by their contrasting styles and personalities. But through these three decades, a few things have never changed. Their love of the game, their respect for each other, and their chosen timepiece, Rolex. Rolex watches from Bromberg, Birmingham, and Montgomery. Again, today's game will begin at 9 o'clock tonight. 24 to 6, 10 21 to go in the fourth. There's the shadows of the Bushitsky press box. Also, Creeping out on the Sunday field, and there's J.J. Brown. He finally is happy to get in on the action here. <laughs> Did not make an appearance. He's rusty. He can't get the ball on the tee. Yeah, he's kicked off once and had an extra point now. Oh, did not have an extra point, actually. This is only the second time he's been on the field. There's George Roby, the freshman, defensive back. Also a kick returner. <laughs> there goes the ball again. He is struggling. Out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Birthplace of the king. And now someone will hold it. They'll, Sanford getting ready for the onside kick. But if you just approach it and pooch it over that second line, you could run down there and get it too. There's the kick to Roby that bounced past him. And he'll just down it in the end zone. 24 to 6, and the dogs will get it at the 20. Brown's kick rolls into the Bar Yancey will head out there again, getting the play from Bill Gray, who relays from Roger Carr, the former All Pro of the Baltimore Colts. There's a good look at Bart and Bill Gray. Carr used to catch throws from another number seven. From LSU, Burt Jones. Ah, uh, yes. Let's go. Come on, o. Harris, nine catches, 124 yards. Had a big day for the Skyhawks. Wilson, 28 out of 41 for 262 yards. First and 10. Hand off Griffith, left side, upended, and will catapult forward for a yard. Second and nine. Those two down linemen, interior down linemen for UT Martin played a good game. They've really been clogging it up. Running in the middle has been tough for Sanford today with that inside linebacker Swift in there. It's really been hard for Sanford to get yardage up in the, up in the middle. Second and eight from the 22. Porter to the left. Had a big game for the dogs. 130 yards on six catches. Whaley's in motion. Pitch back, Griffith quickly on the outside. Might should have stayed out there because Whaley and Burgess were waiting for him to go around their right end. He cut back inside and only gets a couple. Well, we desperately need to string a few first downs together here and just put this game on ice and not let UT Martin's offense get back in the game and do what they just did. Griffith now with 39 yards. You want to, man? My shoulder's killing me. Oh, no problem. Really On several Four. carries. Third down and four from the 26-yard line. I love it. I get off like a fat rat. Third and four. Yancey, shotgun. 
Looking around, throws it out, Porter's there. Long throw for Bart. Would have been a first down, but Porter just couldn't scrape it off the turf there. And the offense now has slowed a bit. Watch, he's just trying to get it off his shoulder pads, but it bounces away. Fourth down, and yeah, and uh, Rackley on the kick. Yeah, he went down to get it. Did hit him in the shoulder pads, didn't keep it off his body. That would have been a great catch, but unfortunately fell short. Skyhawks will come after this when they've come close a couple of times. Rackley needs to get it away. Fourth and five. And there's the kick. The 45 bounces. It is picked up over there by Jones, and he is knocked out of bounds. Jones returns for UT Martin. Last four possessions for Sanford. A missed field goal, punt, punt, punt. Not good. You want to end the game good because you played Thursday against top five Troy State if you're a Bulldog. They've started and passed well. The momentum has been derailed by the Skyhawks a bit. First and 10, and the Hawks have it on the Sanford side of things with eight minutes to go. The final, Florida 52, South Carolina 25. Wilson out in the flats to Reader. They've been doing that all game. In front of Nick Spina, they'll pick up five. And you're right about Sanford needing to get some positives on offense, especially at the end of this game, because you better go in hitting on all cylinders playing Troy State with the team they've got down there. That, that is gonna be, they'll give Sanford all they want. Sanford's gonna have to do everything right to have a chance to beat them. Second and six from the 44. Wilson dropping back up his back foot. He's got the tight end. Brewer over the middle. His first catch of the day. He's got about 11 over the middle to the 31. And you can and beat hurt to scream and <laughs> want to stop this mess. That's exactly what I was going to say. You can hear him screaming and yelling. He doesn't like to see this. I guarantee at the end of the game, the that defense quarter, needs to flex three. its muscle and North stop him right here. Three. First and 10. Wilson under center. Three step drop. This time going deep and Spina. And there's a flag. Spina's just uh, not in the game today. He had Reader on the bump and then I think they're going to let him get away with the first one, but then he just went ahead and shoved him out of bounds, and that's pass interference. Yep. When the ball's in the air, you cannot do that. And you're right, he was going to get beat deep. They had a hitch and go. And Spina blocks the receiver out of bounds. They're going to call pass interference on that every time. Hey, you just shoot every shot like you're the replay, man. You'll do all right, Frank. And uh, I don't know what's taking so long. It was easy to see from up here, 200 yards away. What happened? Interference on Nick Spina. Pass interference on the defense. He is Spot ball. First down. First down, Skyhawks. They were throwing the short one, and you know they're going to set up a hitch and go, and that's what they tried to do, and Spina just shoved it. First and 10 for the 21. Wilson dropping back. There's the wide receiver screen to Cowan. Circus catch, but he's stuck down there. And he'll get about five or so. John Buchanan, who likes to hit, number 38 there, on the tackle. Sophomore out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. He stops the progress here. Good catch by that Cowan. Is, that is a great catch. They've been making a living off that screen. Pass. Wilson throws it. Harris knocked away. Roby again playing very dangerously over there going for the ball. But that's the way he lives over there on the corner. It's like an island. He knocks it to the turf. Harris, if he catches it, has his second touchdown. Yes, he does. That was a good play knocking that ball out because he does score if he catches the football. Third and five down. 24 to 6, under eight minutes to go. And Sanford put their first defensive line back in, try to get some heat on the quarterback. Third and five. Three wide receivers set. Soft toss back to Wilson. He's trying to throw it away and does. Joiner in the area, so no flag. And it'll be fourth and six. And Morris and Taylor putting on pressure. Exactly. They ran an interior line stunt, swung Colin. 
Horace out wide, and he got good pressure on the quarterback right there. Colin Horace, a, one of the better recruits for Sanford, who courted by Division I schools the whole way, and at the last minute, just a little bit short at 5'10", 280. But a big time player here, true freshman, played the Alabama Mississippi All Star game, number 98. Right there in the middle of the line. Wilson over the middle, wide open is Cowan, touchdown. In front of the safeties over there, Cowan gets the score, wide open on fourth and six. Wide open, right down the middle, wide open, and Pete Hurt is livid. And he, he, does, he, he does not, be. yeah, he does not like the way this game's ending because again, they play Thursday and there's nobody around him. There's, there's nobody deeper, and Pete Hurt is very, very upset. <laughs> He's hot at somebody. Richard Kohler will signal in the defense. And now it's 24 to 12. They'll try to get within 10, and there's seven minutes to go. Wilson, they'll try the wraparound and that play's going nowhere. That's dead in the water. Oh, ho. he's yelling at the defense, brother. He's going to give him a ear pull right now. now. On the play, and he is going to get his defense pumped up. Will Pete Hurt. He is upset, and rightfully so again, because the Bulldogs don't have any practice time hardly. They play Troy State. Thursday, a top five team, and the defense, and he just said that's embarrassing, and he's right because they've got to turn around and play in a hurry. Yeah, they do. And he does not like the way the offense or the defense has ended here with the game seemingly in hand, 24 to 12, with seven minutes to go, but hats off to the Skyhawks, too, because they could have folded. They're one and eight over there, but they have fought and uh, played this game and come back to make it competitive. Wilson now 32 out of 47, 301 yards and two touchdowns, and that's doing that when everybody knows he's going to throw. That's the thing. With them being down so far, everybody knows they're going to throw. The defensive line's rushing hard because they know it's going to be pass, and he's doing it when the pressure's on. Six play, 49-yard drive, a minute 14. That's too quick to allow the score as well. J.J. Brown now getting the hang of it as the ball's teed up. <laughs> and rallies his home of the big river. And again, Sanford sort of expecting a pooch kick hanging around up there. They get a squib kick. Somebody needs to cover it. Spina's got it at 25 and just kneels. Right there, and that's where the dogs will take over. Yancey going to the game, and this is a precarious situation. They know you're going to run to try to run the clock. You don't want Yancey to throw because you don't want a mistake to all of a sudden make this a turnover game here. So difficult situation for Roger Carr as well. But as hot as Yancey has been. That's I'm not it. so sure you don't try some. Uh, I think you will with, with the game Bart's having. I think three, you'll let him put it up. Three wide receiver set first to ten. He'll hand to Griffith inside. Big hole for Griffith in the secondary first down. And plus field position on that move to the 40. 14-yard gain for James Griffith out of Oak Grove, Mississippi. And that's exactly what it you Good block by yes, Whaley sir. on Swift. And that's what you need to see out of your offensive line and fullback. That was a great lead block. Allows James to get through the line untouched. He gets a big first down. If we can put together a couple more rushing first downs like that, the game will be out of reach. Jim Whaley might just get a scholarship here when this season is over. 17 carries, 53 yards for Griffith, first and 10. James again inside. We've got a couple over there as he sneaks across the 41. On the tackle. John Pugh, among others. Second and eight from the 42. And Sanford just got to be clockwise here, just milk as much as they can. I know Bart being a senior will watch that play clock and just run off as much time as possible. We've seen this game, Yancey, first 200-yard game in about a year and a half. 
His thousandth pass attempt, Michael Porter's 100th catch, Yancey's 34th touchdown to tie a career mark. He'll go play action now. Going deep, Porter, perfect to the 30. Just a gorgeous pass, Yancey to Porter. Porter now with seven catches. Yancey's pass complete. Eight to catch, five, and he's got Porter. tons of yards. Dr. Digit over here figuring it up. He needs a separate calculator for <laughs> that senior right there out of Niceville, Florida. 23 yards. And that just does show you the confidence that they do have in Bart Yancey, especially today. He's been playing out of his mind. He has hit just about everything he's thrown today. Porter, eight catches, 167 yards. First and 10. Yancey Whaley. Opener in there, the battering ram looking at keep going there with a great balance. He's up to the 25. He'll get five on that carry. That's a reward for the blocking he does. And again, a lot less Moose Johnson in there. No doubt. It's an occasional carry, and I think he likes just getting hit as much as running it. No doubt. I mean, he's running extremely well, real low shoulders, extremely hard to tackle unless you chop his feet out from under him. That's a tough man to tackle. You hit him shoulder to shoulder, he has a forward momentum. That's a hard play to make. Mike Healy and Howell getting ready over there in case they're needed. Second and five. Brown in motion. Hand to Griffith outside. Good crackdown block there by West. Swift is there to knock down Griffith, but he'll get a couple, if not three, on that right side behind Billy West, and it'll be third and two. And again, Wiley with a nice lead block. Here it is again. They pulled Whaley and West, and there's and Whaley getting a piece of Sawyer. From the 23-yard line. We'll call it third and three for the 23. They got to get just past the 20. Scott Knox checking out. Yancey in the shotgun. Three wide receiver set. And the Skyhawks are going to bring everybody. But there's the hand to Griffith, and that's a big play. You figured that might happen on the blitz. Griffith on the outside, sprinting for six, and he's got it. James Griffith for the touchdown. He saw the goal line and put it in another gear, and the sophomore out of Oak Grove has the score. And he is back to last year's form. That's a good run. Again, I'm sure they had the blitz on. They've got a quick hitting play right there. You see him get through the initial line of scrimmage. And now that's all James right there. A great run. He makes one man miss, and he sees that pylon, and boy, he goes for it. And dives yes, there. Sir. That's Walton right there. Fourth touchdown of the year rushing is fifth overall. That sophomore could be a career leader before he leaves here in Sanford history. He's almost, he's right at, if not over, 1,000 yards in his career and has not played very much at all. I don't know how many career carries he has. Let's figure it up and see. Howell with the extra point is up. It's good. It's 31 to 12. So the dogs answer the charge from head coach Pete.